What's up, nerd family? Welcome once again to the Poindexter Lounge. My name is Enosh, aka Enosh Fett, and it is good to have you with me in the lounge today. Now, today is going to be a special day, but first of all, if this is your first time to the lounge, just know this. The Poindexter Lounge is a place for nerds, nerds of all different kinds. And yes, rock stars can even be nerds, trust me. But hey, if this is your first time, just know that the Poindexter Lounge is a place for nerds. It's a place where you and me and my crew can get together and talk about the things that we love. Things like TV shows, movies, games, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books, superheroes toys, music all day long, and so much more. And if those are things that get your blood pumping, those are things that get you up in the morning and get you rocking, then you have found the right place. So make sure to hit that uh, subscribe button and also that notification bell. And for all of you Petra fans, you know that I just accidentally made a Petra reference right there. You're in the right place. So there you go. Uh, hey, but it is good to have you with me today. Today is a very special day. Today is a fun day, a day that... Uh, uh, I've wanted to have for, for quite a while. I talked to an old friend of mine that I haven't talked to in quite a while. Uh, if you know me, uh, you've probably heard me at least at some point. And I know some of you probably say, Enosh, we've heard you talk about this way, way too much because uh, this guy was uh, one of my musical heroes growing up. I mean, honestly, he's he was the voice of Christian music uh, of my generation and continues on to this day to just absolutely be a, a force of nature, man. I tell you what, this I, I he's waiting in the back and I know he can hear me. But honestly, man. I remember being, you know, a young man trying to hit some of the notes that this guy could hit. And as a singer, I just tell you, there was just no way I, it just wasn't happening, <laughs> but he's a phenomenal guy, a great guy, uh, just, a. uh, man, a force of nature and uh, and a wonderful person. And so ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me to the lounge for the first time, Mr. John Schlitt. <laughs> <laughs> what, what an intro can we do that again just so i can hear it again uh, <laughs> yeah sure i can i can send you out again so guys the guy is phenomenal no, I'm just... <laughs> no seriously john you you are man you you're you're a guy who inspired me i mean to even get into music and uh and a, and a part of that and i know we're going to talk about some of that but but just up front i i do want to just say thank you for just being who you were man and and for being the example uh, that you were so thank so you. welcome thank you so much you know uh when we were together uh with the with the band that i won't uh, say what i used to call you but uh yeah. um you guys were were a real trip i mean you worked hard uh we had a great band together so it was uh that's always a thrill for me anytime i i see musicians that are giving their life to christ and uh, are giving their talents to christ and going out and using fantastic rock and roll to, mm. uh, to sing about the most exciting subject in the history of mankind, it works. It works. Absolutely. So it's always been great. In fact, I'm sort of surprised we haven't uh, uh, kept closer contact until now. So, but yeah, me too. Make up for it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, so uh, John, you uh, man, you you've been singing for you know for years that, now. What is it? Forever. I know. For. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, look, I'm I'm getting up there too, man. It's like like I'm I'm starting to get to that point where like people are looking at me and I'm realizing that like my music isn't necessarily for everybody anymore and things change around you. And it's like I never thought that day would come. But you know, I, I try to stay <laughs> I try to stay current. But uh but you uh you man, you've you've seen a lot of different uh genres of music, you've seen a lot of different uh time periods of, of music. When did you first you know, discover music. You know, I know for people like me, music is just part of my life. It's just part of everything about me. And, and, and I'm just curious, like what, what was that experience for you? Um, well, okay. First of all, when I was in kindergarten, I, uh, I was uh, the only boy who could really sing really well. So I got real good grades in kindergarten. I remember that uh, all through, all through my first, you know, first grade, second grade, we had always had these plays and I would always sing lead. So uh, that was as I look back on my life. That that apparently was uh, important, but uh, as far as a band or you know joining together in a band, and I always loved the band mentality. I loved the idea of joining together with other guys and playing music together with instruments. And of course, the Beatles just changed my life. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was around. I was just the right age when they came out. That uh, it really changed my life. And I, I said, okay, I want to do that. And a friend of mine was learning how to play guitar. And I said, well, if he's going to learn, I'm going to learn. So we uh, we put together a band after we could learn three chords, which is good enough for, right, for a while. And um, nobody else would sing, so I had to do the singing. And uh, ended up being a pretty hot band uh, in high school. 
Uh, when I went to college, I broke. I left that band, and they they went for a little bit, and I think it broke up quick, pretty quick after that. Uh, went seriously for my first year in high, in college, and then found another band and uh, um, dabbled with that. And when I finally got my degree, uh, the day I took my last final exam, I was back with that band on stage. And uh, I've been in music except for five years from. From the time um, I I went on stage after my final exam until now, so mm-hmm. but there was a five year period and where where my life totally changed. But uh, music has been uh, an important part of my life. And what's funny is I always looked at it as sort of a it was going to be a fun time, and then I was going to have to go and work. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I never had to go work. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, people people look at me because I I'm a collector and I, I collect toys and stuff. And I, I heard somebody once say that uh, you know uh, musicians are kids that never grew up. And so uh, you know, I look at it, I go, yeah, I I I, I play well, guitar, I rock out, and I got a toy collection. So I guess yeah. I guess that's me. You know, in other words, it looks like they're right. I guess so, man. We're I guess we're do, we're doing something right, man. I tell you what, there there there's not many people that I know, and, and this is, this is nothing, uh, about your age. Cause you look great for your age. There's not, there's, there's not many people I know who are your age, who have, who have had the accomplishments that you've had, who had the experiences that you've had. And I mean, look, you're still rocking the long hair, man. You're still, you're still rocking. You just put out a new album. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but man, you're, you're still rocking, man. You're, you're still, you're still going, man. Well, like, it's, what it's what I'm supposed to do, buddy. You know, um, uh, I'm given as long as God allows me to have this voice. Uh, uh, it's a great tool to bring across the message that I love bringing across, you know. And again, like I said, in an exciting way, uh, you can go on like you. You know, you're a pastor. You go and and you have amazing lessons, and that's what you do. In my case, my lessons are sort of through my music, and and what I can and what I can talk about between songs. So yeah. uh, it's it's my way of being. Uh, to getting the message out, you know, doing the commission that Christ asks us to do. Uh, the last thing he asked was, please, you know, not please, but tell the people about me. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that's what I've tried to do ever since I became a Christian. Now, John, you weren't always, though, no. in Christian music. No. And uh, a lot of people know you from from your younger years in the band Head East. Mm-hmm. And uh, you had you had hits in that band. Uh, how did how did that come about? Well, that was a band that uh, actually I helped form uh, my the, the summer of my freshman and sophomore year in college. Uh, I joined the band and we renamed it and it became Head East. And my sophomore year in college, I almost flunked out of college. I, I got uh, because of the band. And so after <laughs> after getting a double uh, probation on uh, my second semester, I said, OK, guys, I promised my parents I'm going to get a degree. I'll get a degree. I got to leave the band. Uh, and yeah. they said, well, we're going to be big by that time. It's going to, you know, I said, I want to join after the, after I graduate. So no, we'll be, we'll be super big by that time. Hmm. Well, they went through about 20, 23 or four different people in that <laughs> time period. And when I joined them, it was, uh, it was not a pretty sight. Hmm. And we lasted for about six months and everybody said, this doesn't work. And I, I, grabbed the one guy that was part of the team when I left. I says, okay, we're going to call so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. We're going to get the band back together because it will make it. And we grabbed everybody but the guitar player who had become a Christian. How dare that Christian <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll. So we actually uh, did, oh, my gosh, we did uh, a lot of uh, uh, checking out different guitar players. And we got this young guy out of Peoria who had a, a, just a unique style and ended up writing some of the, well, the, for sure, the classic that we had, and then mm-hmm. uh, two or three others that were very popular with uh, with our group. And uh, truly, uh, Mike Somerville, one of the, uh, just just a unique person who ended up making up the the uh, core of the band. And uh, we we exploded pretty quick. I mean, we, we really turned into a, a pretty major college band uh, went a college bar band, which is like one step away from touring, uh, ended up uh, just doing our own record uh, for a ridiculous amount of money, n- nothing, mm-hmm. and it, it became a classic. I think it's it. If it's not platinum now, I can't believe it won't be. So uh, I don't have much control of that because I when I left the band, I I 
cut all ties. But uh, I hear the, I hear the song all the time, and actually a couple others every once in a while. Just uh, uh, but it was a lesson for me. I certainly learned how to be a front man with that band. Well, sure, well, sure. And, and I, uh, you know, it's you it's know, funny, John. John this, day, this day, I'll be places oh. and I'll hear "Never Been Any Reason." Mm -hmm. And uh, and it, it was funny, man, because because when I first started listening to Petra, I I, I first heard Petra, your second band. And we'll talk about that, obviously. Uh, but uh, you know, like I never knew you were in Head East. You know, I mean, and it, and it's funny because there were Petra songs that I knew that I didn't know they were they were Petra because that was you know you you're you're a kid and you don't you you know about music you know you it kind of happens around you but you don't really know who it is and what it is, yeah. and uh, the the first record I ever heard of you was. Um, back to the street your your first record with with right. petra and that was the first real petra album that i had heard and wow. so you know that's when i got that's when i got to know you uh as a singer and uh but it's funny because as i got older and stuff you know like i knew that song never been any reason i'll never forget the first time that i found out that you were in head east and that was your voice and it blew my mind and i was like <laughs> i didn't know that about him and and i mean and dude uh you know like i've i've seen you since you know, go back and sing that stuff. And it's just funny how you can listen to something for so long. And then all of a sudden you can see a song in a completely different way. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, just, just a, com a, a completely different way. I mean, what was it like? Uh, I, I know, I know we'll, we'll talk about kind of what, what led you down another path, but I mean, as far as, as far as those good times, I mean, like being in a rock band back then in, in the seventies and playing to that, I, that many people and just the, the, when you guys Every have these night. hits. Yeah, man. Every like night, Seven days a week. You know what? I know it's going to surprise you, but, but that at the time when it first opened, when we first got our record deal with the, uh, uh, what's funny is we had the album called Flans of Pancake already out mm -hmm. on our own label. A&M Records, we decided we picked our label, our label. We had like three or four to, to pick from. Uh, it was, it was really a dream come true for us because we, uh, uh, we uh, really exploded quickly, um, and so we picked a &M Records, and they and they were going to redo the record. And all they did was change side one to side two and put a new cover. <laughs> and they said, you know, we don't want to touch this. This has a unique sound that we don't want to we don't look in the way of. And so it works. It's gonna it's gonna work. You do it. And that was a bunch of kids just doing their thing playing the music that we that we had refined in the bars. And it was a, a very, but you asked me what was it like to do it? Well, at that time, it was a dream come true. But as time went on and you do it every night, you get used to playing in front of 20,000 people every night. In fact, that's what you expect to do. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're up there for an hour and then you go back on and you go back to your uh, uh, dressing room and you either party or you drink yourself nuts. And uh, uh, at the time, that wasn't my thing, but I learned how to do it. And uh, it got to a point where I was getting into uh, a lot of garbage that almost destroyed my life because I was bored. Hmm. Even a dream that comes true, even a dream, after you do it over and over and over, can be a, can be a bore. And yeah. when you're bored and you don't have Christ, it's surprising what uh, what you can find to do. Yeah, yeah. We're just just looking at some of this uh, this video here of just you on stage and and all these people and 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 that it's 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 so cool because um, you know having obviously not seen you in that environment, it's it's funny because I, I see some of the the mannerisms and the things that you do and stuff that like it's like yeah, that's the John Schlitt that I know. So it's 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 cool to see that like you you kept that that excitement with you and that that's, that's been with you this whole time, man. You know, you yeah. just, you're just doing it for a different reason now. Oh, absolutely. Well, see back then with head East, it was, it was a little more self gratifying. I mean, you know, you did it. My, I've always considered myself a front man. I'm not, I don't call myself a musician. I call myself a front man because God is always, even with this, I truly believe God put me with head East as I look at it now for the purpose of learning my skill so when it was time for, for uh, Petra, who needed that kind of skill and that kind of experience, yeah, I was there to fill the spot. And also the fact that I'd, got, I'd been in the Word for five years before I joined Petra, 
that was I think that was the uh, the formula that he wanted for me. And I, I look back, you know, for a long time. I mean, all the whole time I was in Petra, I wouldn't talk about Head East. I wouldn't sign Head East records. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't do interviews about it because in the Christian music business or scene, especially Christian rock, there were doubting Thomas that were constantly trying to. Uh, find a, a, oh, there he is, there, he, they're phony, they're, they're, that's, they're trying to connect. So it was important to me to never give those doubting Thomases any inkling of, of a tool they could use to say, see, I showed you so, I told you they're phony. Yeah. Because Petra's ministry was not phony. It was, uh, it was for real. Were we perfect? No. Oh my gosh, no. But we knew the blood of Christ was there, uh, and, and we, had that chance to say, Father, I truly mean, I'm truly sorry for blowing it today. By your blood, I ask your forgiveness. And and it was always that way. So, no. um, you know, you, you don't take that for granted and you try your best to to be as real as possible with Petra. So, so after Petra retired, I was able to go back and actually – when we when I split up from the band, it was not a it was not a uh, uh, friendly split. Okay. So it took it took me a long time. And and by this time, I've got pastors going, John. We do never any reason. I tell you, <laughs> no, no, it, you don't know what it says. You don't know what it's about. And yeah. It, and I go. I finally am going. You know what? Um, that's part of my history. That's part of my testimony. Yeah. So yeah. maybe. Well, I think even us, when we played with you at one of our sound checks, we, uh, as a, as a joke, cause we didn't think you'd do it, but we, we busted out one of the sound checks even would never been any reason, you know, just, just as fun. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, so, you did. So. And, and it was just, again, like that, it was just one of those things where I didn't, I felt that it would get in the way of the ministry. And I, yeah. I really, I really respected and still do Petra's ministry. And I never wanted to be a part of it that would get in the way of its, of its, uh, um, oh, it's, it's, it's genuineness, you know, sure. I just, so, uh, but when I, when we, when it retired, then the only one I had to be concerned about was me. Mm -hmm. And um, by that time, you know, the Downing Thomases, I'd, I'd had up here with them. And <laughs> you know, I said, you know, what do you, what do you tell people who say rock, Christian Rock is uh, for the devil? I said, I know. I could care less what they think. I care what God, what God thinks. And I know what, and I know he knows what I'm thinking. So that's all I care. Yeah. I honestly don't care about them at all. And I don't. And, but with Petra, I hate, I, I was, I was sort of under bondage there yeah. uh, as far as, caring about that ministry rather than me. Well, that, that makes sense. I mean, it, you know, like I, I think even myself, like having been in Christian bands, you know, I've been in a couple of Christian bands now. I've been, I've been blessed that like, even though, even though I wasn't on the same level as you, like I didn't, I, I have, I haven't been somebody that just played in a lot of different bands and like had a lot of bands fail, you know, like we see, I've seemed to be pretty <laughs> steady uh, with the people I played with. Uh, but uh, that being said, like, you know, that was always, I, I remember being a young man and, so case in point, like what you're saying, like, cause I would, man, when, when I was a kid, we, we'd travel and I guess we haven't gotten into Petra yet, but I, I do want to say like, I understand what you're saying there because, because I, I always got that from you guys going to watch you guys that you were real, uh, you know, even though, even though like everything was bigger than life, you know, and like there was the lights and the guitars and, you know, and just everything, it was awesome. But at the end of all that, you guys were very real. And you would share, either you would share or Bob would share. And it just felt from the heart. And it was just, it was real. And so for me, I remember being a young man, you know, I started my first band when I was 17 and, you know, here were this Christian, you know, rock band. And, you know, we were, we started off as four guys. We were going to change the world for God. You know, we were going to, you know, because we were, we, you know, and like our first show, like we, you know, we did a couple of Petra songs and, you know, and I was trying to sing, uh, um, I love the Lord off the, the Petra praise one album. And there's no stinking way that I was going to be able to do that. So like, I'm, I'm screaming my lungs out. I mean, I can sing, but not that, not like that. And so, uh, and so it was just, um, uh, it was one of those things, but it was funny because, you know, you're a young man and you encounter different things, you know, with, with people and, and, uh, 
And we had this Bible study, you know, that, that we had that we grew up to about 30 people. So we'd go out and do these concerts and stuff, you know, youth groups and and uh, and, and different places because there was a pretty good Christian music scene around here. So we go do that and then we invite everybody to our Bible study on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. And so we built it up to about 30, 40 people. Well, then you find yourself like, you know, you meet the pretty girl and, you know, things you know, she's getting a little crazy and things are getting a little crazy. But like me and my old drummer, we always used to say, like, we feared God more than anything else, you That's know. Right. And uh, but that was always the forefront. It was like, well, you know, like, what's our testimony going to be and like for, for most red blooded young men? That's not what they're thinking. You know, they're they're, they're not thinking what their testimony is going to be. But I, I do want to thank you because, you know, obviously I had people in my life that, that shepherded me in, in my faith. But man, listening to Petra records. And and just listen, listening to those lyrics and and watching you guys when we'd get to see you and, and watching the way that you presented yourselves, I mean that was a huge encouragement to to people like me and I know so many others that I've talked to over the years, you know and and uh, and after having played with you, like you know we had a bunch of Petra fans, you know who would contact us. Yeah, I don't know why you know, it was just like hey we're just some guys from Michigan, but you know I was like okay cool you know and and like they'd want to know about us then and I tell them the same thing. It's like you know we're we're just trying to serve the Lord, man. We're just, we're just trying to give God our best. And Amen. so, uh, so I, th so I thank you for that. I really do. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you saw you uh, were, we're seeking that, uh, that challenge, you know, and you're trying to fulfill it. That's very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So you're in, so you're in head East, you're, you're playing, every, everything's going great. I mean, as far as like from a, from a secular point of view, like you've attained kind of what you've set out to do. You're in this band, you're playing to thousands of people, but it's taken its toll on you. Yes, it is. And you end up pretty much at the bottom. You're at the top, but you're at the bottom at the same time. Yeah, so, I'll tell you what's the worst part about that was the last two years of Head East. Although, please understand, any any fan that's listening right now, I always loved, I always loved our audience. I always appreciated. Uh, that's one thing with me. I've always appreciated uh, the audience that will listen. You know that that mm -hmm. wanted to come and see my band. I always appreciate. I never, I never treated them uh, with anything but respect, and even with with uh, with Head East. The only problem is, uh, like I said before, you go on stage every night, and it's it doesn't matter with twenty people, twenty thousand, three thousand, three hundred. It's the same old, same old. You do the same set, you, and then you're, and so that gets boring. So you're looking forward to after the show, yeah. and then that gets boring, and you're trying to outdo the night before that night. So the last two years, I, I'm afraid I don't, I've gotten into cocaine and uh, uh, with that, um, a lot of different booze and, and just uh, what my life depends on how much coke I have. And, uh, and I, you know, I do a little coke to get up. I do some beer to get down. And basically, I was looking for artificial sobriety, which I discovered later. Uh, that perfect tie, that perfect tie between, as well, it was mm -hmm. sobriety. Artificial <laughs> Yeah, but, but uh, you know that's how the enemy plays it. What God wants to give us for, for free, the enemy charges our life for it. Sure. But uh, because I got worse and worse and worse, and then, and then I got I got fired from the band uh, yeah. in 1980. Uh, part of it was a bit of a bit of a power play. I mean, we, um, uh, it, you know, you've got personalities. One would be sort of in charge, and the other one must be in charge. And I'm afraid I was one of those guys that in a rock band. I know, I, I know it's hard to believe in. I don't and, think that's know, ever I, happened in the history. This now, this is intriguing, John. I know, I know. This is this, <laughs> is, this is real behind the scenes stuff here. I mean, I know, I, I don't think I've ever heard of it. A rock right, band having yeah. having yeah. internal turmoil like that. Yeah, this is totally unique to to, to Head East. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, basically, the battle I lost, and, and but mm. really, when it was all when you look back at it, I I won because when I got when I got uh, kicked out of the band, I. Uh, uh, went on a binge of about six months uh, to start my own band. It was called Johnny Band. And uh, yeah. it was just a great excuse for me to stay either drunk or, or coked up 24 hours a day for about six months. And yes, you can do it if you've been doing it for two or three years before that. Uh, yeah. uh, but one day, uh, one morning, I woke up on the couch. My one-year-old son is looking at me like, why are you on the couch, Dad? And what happened was we were going to have a uh, anniversary uh, party with some friends. And my, my routine was get totally blitzed and do coke and sober up. Mm. Well, I couldn't find any coke. I got so totally blitzed, passed out, and missed my party. And my wife was not happy with me. 
And uh, so she left me on the couch and my little one-year-old uh, was looking at me was, dad, why are you here? And as I was looking at him, a voice said, you know, you're worth more dead than alive. Mm. And I totally agreed with it. I, I agreed with that voice. So I sat, I got up finally, sat in my chair and I had a five-year-old daughter, one-year-old son that are playing in the living room because I'm there. And I'm sitting here going, okay, the best, I'm not using a gun. It'll leave a mess for the kids. So I started contemplating what kind of pills I could get in the, the location I was at that would be as quick and painless as possible. And my wife tapped me on the shoulder. Now, my during this six month period, when I was going on this binge, my wife gets saved. And I want you to know, as a non-Christian who's <laughs> feeling sorry for himself, a wife being saved is the last thing you do. <laughs> I bet. So um, she, you know, I'd come home to my little pity party and, and after rehearsal and uh, she's coming from a Bible study, all just happy as a lark and all this. And I go, what world are you living in? Don't you understand where we're at? And she goes, I'm glad you asked that. And uh, she's trying to tell me about Christ. And I, I would get back in her face and don't, don't. I, I'll tell you what, I'll, beca I'll become a Christian when I'm too old to have any fun, like when I'm 50. And, uh, and so that was my attitude. But that morning, as I'm sitting there considering what I was going to do, she tapped me on the show and says, now, John, remember, you promised you'd come and talk to my pastor tonight. I said, when? She goes, last night when you were drunk. Mm. I go, okay, all right. And I went there with an attitude of nothing was going to change. I wanted her to remember I tried. I walked into that pastor's house with an attitude and walked out with the Holy Spirit. And my life changed. And that's that's uh, that was the beginning of a totally different life. Uh, it I had the Johnny Band still. So for about the next two or three months, it was absolute hell. Every time I went on, uh, you went out on uh, the weekends because the enemy didn't like the fact that he'd lost me. So the temptation probably was greater than, and I failed many times, probably greater than than I had with the headies, with all the touring and all the touring, mm -hmm. the, the limos and the, and the plane, you know, it, believe it or not, this little bar band called the Johnny Band was, it was, it was ridiculous. And I'd go home feeling like garbage. Mm -hmm. And finally, this little church kept praying for us, praying for me. And finally, my wife says, this is enough, you know, and I said, you know what, you're right. So I put everybody together, all my, my manager, my, my, my in-laws, my mom and dad, uh, my, the booking agent came in from Detroit. My manager came in from Minneapolis. This was in Illinois. It was a major meeting. And I basically made the announcement, I'm quitting. Mm -hmm. And my uncle was, my uncle and aunt were also there. My uncle Jim goes, you can't quit rock and roll. That's in your blood. You can't quit. <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Jim. I appreciate your support. And uh, my mom's going, well, don't you think you should give it just a little bit more? And, you know, and the manager, of course, saying, we got three labels. I want you. All you got to do is play in front of them and they're going to sign you up. And blah, blah. you know, the typical. Mm -hmm. Oh, typical, sure. You make a you make a decision for Christ. And of course, you're going to get all this garbage. And finally, my wife bends over and says, here's how it is. Music or me. And I looked at it and I go, all right, that's it, guys. I'm done. Mm. That, wow. You know, that, it was like, okay, cool. Wow. I don't have to make a decision now. <laughs> that decision was made for you. It was like, good. I'm, it's out of, my, out of my hands now. And uh, it was... Uh, it was an amazing time. Uh, you, you, bring, know, was, you bring up a, a really interesting point, you know, John, because uh, a lot of people, they, they try to get life on track. They, they come to God. They, uh, I, I worked, um, I've worked for the last few years uh, uh, with the program uh, Celebrate Recovery. Oh, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. My, my mom, I was raised by my grandmother and my mom, her whole life had problems with drugs and alcohol and, and mental issues and things like that. And so uh, thank God for a, a godly grandmother who took me in my two sisters and, uh, and all that. Uh, so it's a special, it's a special, you know, place for me, but you know, like one of the things we talk about a lot, like people, people feel like, like if they become a Christian, for example, well, they, they, 
they just got to be perfect, that everything just goes away, that everything is just, hey, everything's hunky dory. If I'm really a Christian, if I'm really, you know, because they, they want to be genuine. I think people come like with the real genuine yeah. feeling like that they they want to be genuine. They, they want to feel like they're they're really doing this. But if they mess up, they feel like it's all done. And that, you know, and I, I love, I love the fact that like someone like you can, can come out and just say, you know, look, man, I, I, I did it and I, I still messed up, mm -hmm. you know, I, there wasn't this magic moment that all of a sudden, Here, you know, here's I, another secret in my life. I still mess up. Mm -hmm. I blow it every day. Yeah. As all of, why? Because we're human. We are failing. We were, we are sinful. Yeah. That's why the blood of God had to be shed. The blood of God, not a goat, not a not sheep, the blood of God had to be shed for the fact that we are not perfect and we're never going to be perfect. The only perfect human that ever walked the face of the earth was Jesus Christ, and we're not him. Yeah. So uh, I totally agree, buddy. Man, the guilt factor, the guilt factor that can be used against you is a powerful tool, and it's not from God. It's from the enemy. Now, does that justify us going out, yeah, it's, you know, I'll do whatever yeah. I want because, yeah. no, the word already – already pointed that out no but don't let the guilt of failure even if it's every day yeah take you away from the fact that jesus christ loves you and has a plan for you and died for you again and there's the, like i said the two-sided sword don't allow it to be an excuse to do whatever you want yeah because god knows that too he yeah, sees absolutely it. absolutely so yeah it, it's uh, important for us to to bring that across no there's there's no such thing as a perfect christian because yeah. there's no such thing as a perfect man. That's right. So, so you're you're in that moment. Your uh, your wife Dorla, she uh, she helps you make that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, I, and by the way, I, I will just tell you, uh, I love uh, your song, "The Gift." That you wrote that you wrote for her and and i don't know if i if i if i told you this if i've told you this since the last time i say i because i saw you just a few years ago uh but when i married tiffany my wife uh she walked we, we got married on the beach uh and she walked down to the gift oh that was that was the song that she walked down to I and know. um and yeah. uh it's just it's a beautiful song and uh you know, and, and I, one of the things that I love about you is, is, uh, have, I mean, I've, I've obviously I've been to so many Petra concerts. I can't even count anymore. I've been to so many John Schlitt concerts. Like I've, I, I've participated in John Schlitt concerts for goodness sake. You were one. Come on. I was one. Right. And so, so I gotta say like, you know, like I know that story, you know, like, but I, but I, I've heard you talk about your wife and how much you love her and just what she meant to you. And I've heard your testimony or obviously, you know, this is for people who haven't, uh, but I, I just I think it's really awesome the way that that you honor her and what you do. And, you know, I mean, obviously, there was all those years that she that she put up with all that stuff and, and dealt with all that stuff that you were going through. But that's a strong woman, man, the, to, to put up with all that stuff and, and go through all that, you know, and and uh, and obviously she gave you that uh, that last ultimatum and said, hey buddy come on we, we got to do this. Yeah, so that it, it was the perfect thing to be said. I mean, that was that was straight from God's mouth, I think. Yeah, you know, well, that's awesome. God, God used her as amazing to, and He has for, I mean, for many, 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 many years. She, she has been a very amazing tool that God uses in my life many, many times, every day, every day. That's awesome. So, uh, so I know I know this, but for just for those, uh, you know, so you, so now you're, you're not doing that anymore. You're not doing music. You're, you're trying to get things back on track and and get a focus. And this is kind of where we get into the those years that you talked about there, those those five years that you weren't really doing music. And uh, so so what so so what does the rock star who's been on stage playing to twenty thousand people every night and coked out and and, and <laughs> jumping around a stage and singing, you know, uh, you know, save my life, I'm going down for the last time, night after night after night. What, what does that guy do after the, all that? Well, that guy cuts all his hair off. <laughs> it's a three-piece suit and says, look, I got a degree as a civil engineer from the University of Illinois. Come on, hire me. Mm. And they all look at me and go, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't call us. We'll call you. And finally, I got a job sweeping a floor in a tool and die factory. Mm. And, and the only way I got that job is because I could draft, you know, doing drafting. Mm -hmm. And so they, I get there at six o'clock in the morning, sweep the, sweep the factory out. And then when everybody else got there, I would uh, do some drafting, you know, 
a real cheap drafter, I'll tell you what. And then I finally started learning, and then they put me in the assembly line type of tools. This a tool and die is a pretty cool play. And then I started creating my own dies, and that was that was cool. Yeah, that that kind of stuff. That lasted for about six months. And meanwhile, I'm still applying for other jobs because I'm getting paid nothing of it. I mean, I mean, I could work a week and get paid about what I was getting per night with head east per diem. You know, it's a, mm-hmm. it was, but I praise God that that someone gave me a chance. Yeah. I finally had a resume, worked as a tool and dive maker. You know, at mm-hmm. least it wasn't rock star. You know, it's, it, and so I kept writing. There was a, there was a, uh, Oil shell, oh, no, no, and uh, and a coal cup, a coal mine being developed close to where we were living, and they were looking for a lot of, of people. You know, they were doing a lot of hiring, and uh, th- there was a company looking for an engineer, or basically more of a surveyor, uh, which I that was one of my fortes, and so I sent in a note. I wrote them a letter and said, "Listen, this is my history." I am anxious to get back in the world and I will not let you down. Mm. And the guy, and this guy was a real, just an uppity dude. And he says, says, you know what? I like your attitude. You know, come on. I want to, I want to talk to you. So I got, and my, my income instantly doubled, which means it was almost survivable. (laughs) (laughs) And so I worked at that mine for, uh, it was, it was a temporary job, six months. And then that job was over. But, once you got your foot in the door, I knew where all the points were, the engineering points. So I got that job. And then when that was over, they transferred me to another company just coming in. And then I worked for that company. I worked for like three or four different companies on that project. And the last company I worked for, oh, my God, I was getting paid by the hour. And I was working my, I was working 60 hours a week. I was getting paid a bundle. And Finally, the, the main boss comes in and says, we want to hire you full-time. I says, oh, great. What's that mean? He said, well, you get a salary. I said, oh, I, and what's the salary? Oh, it's the same as if I was working 40 hours. Mm-hmm. I get it. So you want me to work 60 hours a week and I get paid <laughs> 40. I said, why would I do that? He says, because you'll have a job when this, when this is done. I go, oh, okay. So... I worked for that company for the next two or three years, developed an oil shell mine in, in Utah, and then got transferred to the main office. And uh, really, I had, when, when I finally did that, then I, that was in Evansville, Indiana. And that, that was over a period of about five years. And I thought that I bought a house, my first house, and I thought that was the American dream. You know, I thought mm-hmm. this must be what God has for me. I had my kids going to Christian school. My we had a great church. I had a great job. We had our first home. I rebuilt all my homes. I every home I ever lived in, I had to go and rebuild it. So mm-hmm. I just finished rebuilding it, and um, I was sitting next to my wife a Sunday afternoon, and I just finished out, so I didn't have anything to do, and so I, I wasn't used to just sitting around going, "Well, everything's done." I, and I sort of said, "Well, this must be the American dream." And all of a sudden, a voice, it was like a voice says, this isn't it, John. Mm-hmm. Don't get, this is not it. Don't get content. This is not what I have for you. Mm-hmm. Or No, it just, it just was not. It just this, this isn't it. And I looked at my wife and said, hey, I think, I think God just spoke to me. And I'm not one like, you know, ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I felt like, wow, that came out of nowhere. And she goes, what do you think it is? I said, I have no idea. And to make a long story short, there was a, a, a prophet who uh, basically said the same thing. And, you know, just how God does in packages. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're totally blown. We don't have any idea what that could be. And then one day, Bob Hartman, the Petra, hunt, hunts me down through my brother. And I called him. He, you know, he played, Jeff, my brother, says, he doesn't do that anymore. He's not in the music, which I, I really wasn't because I, I hid from the secular system because that's, that's another story. But I just I had to disconnect my phone and I just sort of disappeared. Yeah. And so Jeff basically, yeah, this is Bob Hartman. I'm with a band called Petra. Oh, he doesn't do that anymore. He's no, he just, <laughs> and he, he, Bob goes, well, he might want to talk to me. He might want to talk to me. 
So here's my number. Would you give it to him? He says, yeah, I'll do that. So he gives me the number. And I says, who? He says, some Bob Hartman. I says, did he mention Petra? He goes, yeah. I, was, I said, what did you say? He goes, <laughs> so I just told him you don't do anything. Wrong. He goes, oh, duh. And I thought, I thought, you know, that uh, Greg's voice might have, uh, uh, he might have got a cold or something in the middle of an album, and they wanted me to come in and help finish it. You know, maybe do background vocals. I was excited about that. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because by that time, I'm a big Petra fan. I mean, yeah. I thought they were amazing. And uh, so I called up Bob, and he goes, uh, basically says, John, uh, um, you've got to, are you still a Christian? I said, yeah, I'm a heavy-duty Christian. And I said, you know I, lo I love that question. I love yeah. that question. John, well, are, are you still a Christian? Because those are questions that like us, like in, in these like little bands would ask, right? Like if somebody like that, we know that like anytime we were looking for a bass player or somebody, you know, like, Hey, you're, you're a Christian, right? Like, you know, so I love the fact that Petra asked that question. You're still a Christian, right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. well, cause, Cause I had disappeared. I mean, nobody knew what I was doing or did do what I said. Yeah. Bob, actually I'm a very heavy duty Christian. And, uh, he goes, well, he says, Greg is leaving the band, and we would like to know if you'd be interested in joining it. And I said, you, I said, and I'm going, oh, yeah. I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, he goes, and by this time, I'm thinking, oh, it's music or me. I'm thinking, oh. Mm. I, and I'm going, oh, I don't yeah. know. And I looked over, my wife's in the kitchen, and she's, jumping up and down and praising God. And, wow. and she somehow she knew what was going on. And so I go, well, I think that's, there's no problem that. So I said, yeah, let's do it. And he goes, don't you think you should pray about it? I'm going, yeah, yeah. Proud but see, I knew. I mean, seriously, that answered all the questions. You know, yeah. this, this is what you're going to have your heart's desire. And I'm going, this is it. So the band had to figure out that it was. Uh, they were still in the middle of, the, of their uh uh, back the no, their beat the system tour, mm -hmm. which ended up being their live album, and so uh, they couldn't really say anything to anybody, and so for like this was like, oh shoot, halfway through the tour, so yeah. I had I didn't hear a thing from them. They sent me all the records. I remember I said records. They sent me all the yeah. records. They're coming back, John. I know. Hey, my oh. wife bought my wife just bought me a. Um, uh, a, rec a turntable and i will tell you this in my office at the church i have uh i've got i've got three petra albums three records in uh -huh. in frames and then i got one fake one because i haven't because I, I haven't actually seen a real jekyll and hyde uh uh record yeah i don't think there is one and, no but i'll tell you what I, I i picked one up when we were playing with you we play uh the night before uh show we did in albert lee minnesota we saw you guys in uh in wisconsin and we drove and saw the and they were giving out these these things oh, that were the size of records that had yeah. the jekyll and hyde thing on yeah they fit perf it fits perfectly in a in a in a record uh frame and so i've got those four on uh and that night i had bob hartman sign those and uh and so, so I got that in my, in my, uh, and it's funny because people either come in my office and they go, wow, that is awesome. You got Petra records in here. So, is that really Bob Hartman's signature? Or they'll go, who's Petra? Cause it, cause it, because it's those old records. It's, it's like not, not of this world. Never oh, say yeah. die. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, okay. Never say die and not of this yeah. world. More power to you. More power to you. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so it's those three and, mm -hmm. uh, and then the Jekyll and Hyde one that's, you know, just kind of snuck in there a little bit, you know, that <laughs> could, couldn't be total, probably opposites as far as music, music. Oh, but, yeah. We're but, talking two ends of the table here. Yeah. But that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah. So yeah, records are coming back, man. Things are, things are, are definitely, uh, are, are definitely coming back. Sorry. I, I went off on that, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that, that's a fun thing. So, so yeah, so you're 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 talking to them. Uh, mm -hmm. For for those who don't know, uh, who are new to this whole conversation, uh, Greg X Volts was mm -hmm. the lead singer of Petra for many years on all those albums that I just that I just uh, discussed. And there's a whole other history of Petra. Petra started in 1972 and uh, had had a had a long career at that point. Yep. And um, we're talking what is this like 85? 85. Yep, that yeah. was year 85. Then I started in 86, February 3rd, my birthday. 
sang in front of 6,000 people in Brisbane, Australia, for the first time in seven years sober. Hmm. It, it was weird. I got super excited, blew my throat up after the third song, and the guys in the band are going, what did we do? Oh, my gosh, what, what is this? And Bob came up and says, we've rehearsed for a month, and you have <laughs> any problem with your voice. What's going on? I said, well, I just get a little excited and uh, – well, we well we got we've got some of that right here, man. Uh, we got we got some uh, some John oh, Schlitt right. here from eighty. Whoop, there he 86. goes. Six, yeah, yeah, eighty six right here. Uh, after you had joined the band, and yeah. uh, man, I, I love the jacket. I did too. I thought that was a cool T shirt. Now, so so, so now so, that was a real jacket. That's right. Yeah. I went out to a theater, theater, uh, you know, the theater places. Mm -hmm and got uh, a black one and a white one and I think a burgundy one and I like the white one so much although that's a t-shirt believe it or not oh really yeah because uh, man I man when I get on stage I really cook oh and yeah I get, I get hot and a jacket I I <laughs> maybe walk on stage with a jacket but I guarantee you after about the second song it's off yeah because I just can't handle it but that that was actually a t-shirt very cool Okay, so now we're into the Petra years, and this is where I want to start kind of probing your mind because I've heard all of the, I was telling you, you know, I've heard all of the the interviews, you know, and everybody, you know, asks you all these questions about Petra and everything. And 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 look, I, it's not that I don't want to ask you about Petra because I, I love Petra, but I know a lot of those stories. Uh, but I want to I want to kind of ask you some some different things here. Yes. So so you joined the band in '86. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just this last just this last week we lost Eddie Van Halen, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, famous band that had, I mean, technically they had three leads, lead singers and I love Gary Sharon, but, but, uh, you know, had yeah. the two major lead singers, right. what, what was it like coming into a band that had been so established? You hadn't, you didn't start this band. It wasn't like this was a group of your buddies that got together and that, you know, you're coming into this established group that had a, a huge following and Greg X Volts had a completely different voice than you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? What's funny is uh, uh, I had I had to answer the question, what's the feel to try to feel the fill the shoes of, of Greg? And I said, why should I feel his shoes? I got my own. There you go. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it wasn't like I was standing around uh, twiddling my thumbs uh, in the music world while they these guys were doing. Uh, I hate to say it, but I, I knew for a fact that I was supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. I was I was a pro. And I was playing for a pro band, and I, I knew that God had put me there, so I didn't worry about it. I, I seriously didn't worry about it. It was, it was like, uh, again, the, the shoe thing. I, I don't need to fill his shoes. I got my own. And uh, they looked at me like, "Wow, that's cool." <laughs> and and really, for the first year, I, I did have to go out and prove that I I belonged there, and that's yeah. what I would do. I would go out and let them know that I belonged on that stage. And uh, uh, meaning, I, I tried my best to to uh, be the front man that Petra deserved. Yeah. Did did you did you meet with any flack from uh, from longtime fans? Uh, not really. No. Really I mean, good. I'm sure, I'm sure there was some, but they never came up to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody's yeah. anybody going to spew flack? Usually runs it and does it in the dark. Yeah. And, and so. Uh, I never had to. And if somebody said, man, I really sort of like Greg better. I said, I don't blame you. He's amazing. And yeah. it's okay. Cause like I said, I got my own shoes and there we were, go. and we were doing a different style of music. I'll be honest. I would have loved to do uh, something like a beat the beat the system. Uh, I thought that was a fantastic record. And I told Bob that he says, well, don't worry about it. We're never doing another record like that. <laughs> I said, R -r why? I thought it was a great record. He said, nope. Never do another record. For those of you who haven't heard Beat the System, Beat the System was kind of a departure because Petra had had kind of like an early 80s rock sound, kind of a lighter rock sound. And mm -hmm. then with Beat the System, there's great songs on that album, but it was a complete departure and there was more electronic music, uh, you know, yeah. more programming, things like that. And uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was Fairlight Heaven. And uh, at the time, I didn't realize, I just thought it was really a cool record. And Bob goes, Nope, we're doing rock and roll. I said, well, I know how to do that, so that's cool. And so uh, me joining the band, us signing, uh, us working with John and Dino, turned the band totally into 
what it was from the beginning, but about three times more. And mm -hmm. uh, so I was part of, of the new change and I was totally cool with it. I had just, uh, uh, it was my cup of tea. I loved it. Now, I love the fact that uh, I know recently you've been working with John Lowry, the keyboard player who's back up there on the stage. And so here's here's a little cool thing. Uh, John Lowry grew up literally about 15 minutes from where I live. John, Michigan. Is, John is probably one of the finest keyboard players I've ever dealt with um, and and doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, the guy, no. the guy is fantastic. He's amazing. He he's never happy with himself. Never. Mm. Happy. Now. I think he's finally come to a little bit more of a piece because, you know, he's got all these people in, in Nashville who are going, oh, yeah. 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 So, so I think he's starting to realize that maybe he's not too shabby. But uh, and and he's really doing great on producing. He's actually got he actually co-wrote a country song with someone he produced. And it's uh, it's on the charts right now. Wow. Trump train. So if you ever hear Trump train, that's that's a, <laughs> that's a song he wrote and produced. So uh uh, he's, he's doing amazing. He's, yeah. My, my aunt come to find out my aunt used to hang out with him. Like when they, when they were younger, it's, it's so fun. It's so funny because like when she found out I was a huge Petra fan, like I would always, you know, young me, John, I, I would be talking about the band all the time. Cause I, cause honestly, this is where I discovered you, uh, your first album with the band. This is where I discovered Petra. Actually, I should say uh, was, uh, your, uh, first, um, um, I don't know what happened there. My, Oh, my, Hello, can you still hear me? I can hear you, buddy. Okay, I don't know what happened. My camera turned off or something. I don't know what happened here. Let me, uh, I can fix that, but let me, uh, uh oh. No idea what, what happened there. Uh, glad I can redo that. I don't know. Hold, hold on just a second. I'm just going to disconnect this real quick. No problem, buddy. Where did you get this video? This is on uh, this on just on YouTube. Really? Yep. Yeah, I just got to restart my camera. Man, that that is something. There we go. There you are. Yeah, there's a, there's all dude. There's there's all kinds of footage of you on on YouTube, man. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So this is where I discovered you. Uh, was was right about this time, eighty six. Uh, why is that doing? Right? You know what? That camera doesn't like the skin of you. That's Appar it. Apparently not. Uh, hold on. Uh -huh. I, let me see my my power cable here. Let me make sure my power cable is right. Oh, that's why. It's unplugged. Okay. I got it. Hold on a second. I apologize. No problem, buddy. I'm enjoying the video. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good video. Not bad at all. Yes. There we go. That should be better now. All right. Yeah, somehow I got unplugged and the battery died. So, okay. okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. So this is where I discovered you was about 86. Uh, uh -huh. John, it's where I discovered Petra really. So like, I, I, I was aware of some Petra songs back in the day, but I wasn't really aware that they were Petra. And so, yes. so you were the voice of Petra to me. This was, this was, you were always the voice of Petra to me. And I'll be honest, I, I, I'll be honest, John, I, I was that guy for years that I was like, yeah, Greg x is fine, but John Schlitt is the lead singer of Petra. Let's get it right. Let, let, no, no. <laughs> Look, look the, the first time I heard you sing Judas Kiss live, uh, I just about lost my mind. I was like, this is the way this song was supposed to be sung. That I don't care what else came before. Nothing else came before. Now I have heard the song the way it was meant to be to be sung. Um, but uh, but I say that because uh, a girl at my church just gave me um, uh, a copy of Back to the Street. That was your first record. Yes. with with Petra. And so uh she came and I fell in love with that. I listened to that thing nonstop. Man, I had a I, I had a cassette and so I yeah, I, I'm dating myself now. Uh we have moved we've moved from uh, records to cassettes now. And so uh I, you know, I had my I had my uh my headphones and I would just listen to that all, nonstop and I sang the song King's Ransom at my 5th grade talent show. That's not an easy song to sing, buddy. 
Well, my voice, see, back when I was a kid. Back then, you could sing really high, couldn't you? I could. That, that, <laughs> see, that was the problem. That you know, I got to love you guys because I could sing all your stuff when I was like 11. <laughs> <laughs> and then that all changed. And so I couldn't oh, do no. that anymore. Oh, um, but, uh, but no, you know, it, and it was really awesome, man, because, um, because the, the, uh, the message in the song King's Ransom, and I did that song in my public school. And they let me do it. And uh, for those of you who don't know, I mean, the, the, the song King's Ransom, all it, it's basically the gospel. It, it just talks about that the, the king of, of all eternity basically gave up everything and paid a king's ransom for my soul. Yep. And, uh, you know, so I fell in love with you guys from the beginning. And uh, I mean, now you you record this album. You're, mm -hmm. you're in there with these guys. You're the new guy. You're new, fresh. They go in a totally different music direction mm -hmm. than, than what, but they, they were going toward more of kind of that 80s kind of a arena rock sound, a harder, edgier sound, yep. which your voice is perfect for. Um, and there's famously, there's actually, uh, I think, a, like a making of uh, uh, Back, to the, Back to the Street on yep. that's actually on YouTube. People can actually find that and watch that. And uh, that that's really cool. But like, what's going through your mind then? Like, you've been through all of this stuff and now you're in this band, you're fully in. Like what is what is John Schlitt at this point thinking? Like what what is I'm, where are you at? I am thinking. Thank you, Lord, for letting me go back and and uh, make up for everything I've done. Mm. Um, because Petra played in every stadium, every except except for the stadiums. I mean, Hades did some super jams and summer jams. I never played in in uh, Kansas City Stadium. And I never got to play in St. Louis Stadium again with Petra, but mm -hmm. all the all the uh, uh, you know ten thousand, twenty thousand seat three. Uh, I played a lot of places with Petra where Hedy's played. Okay, and I was able to go back and be a different person, and and absolutely bring a, a positive message other than party hardy. Less who cares? Less you know. Less uh, in the head east, it was party, 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 and love my audience. But that was about all we had to say, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, love, love, peace, rock and roll, uh, and where I was able to go with with Petra and and really sing about something that's eternal. And uh, it was, uh, I'm serious. All I could ever think of, man, I remember playing there the last time. Wow, thank you, Lord, yeah. thank you. Because when when I discovered Petra, I was very disappointed, because I saw what rock and roll could be do, could do, and I figured I'd blown it, because I was not a very godly person on stage with with Head East. I was I was a typical lead singer, and um, so for God to give me a second chance, and and you know and and correct some of the stupidity that I had said and done and all that on the stages before it was, it was a, a real treat for me. And that's yeah. what I was thinking. Uh, and I was, all, I was also saying, thinking, Oh, this crowd should be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously Christian music was a little different back then. Right. You guys. Well, had and, little... it was, and, and we never competed with our, with our uh, Chris, uh, Christian rock band brothers. To me, that was never, that was never a competition. The competition yeah. was the secular side of things. Because sure. to me, I, we just worked as a team with our other with our other Christian rock and rollers. Uh, our job was to work was to be that alternative sure. to the secular system, and I knew how the secular system worked. And so I compared all our you know our all, all, all our accomplishments to the secular side of things. Yeah. So I was always oh man oh oh it's, we should be doing better, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that we were doing. Ten times better than anybody else in the history of the of the Christian music scene. So sure, but that was always my my thing. Now your second record, this means war. Uh, that's that's a personal thing for me, man. Like I had every like you know they used to they used to sell soundtracks, you know, that you could sing in church and stuff like that. And I don't know how I convinced my grandma of this, but I convinced my grandma to let me do like all those songs in church back at, back then. It was and, perfect. It, well, I mean, it's perfect lyrically, man, but it was rocking, man. So some people were like, What in the world are you, you know, like what were you I, 
you know, like, uh, and, 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 and trust me, man, the, it was not lost on me when we got to play, he came, he saw, he conquered with you because I sing that song so much as a kid, but you know, you were, you were teasing me just a minute ago about my, my high voice. So I, I would be remiss then if I didn't show you this, cause I, and I, this is one of the reasons why I love having this moment here with you because, uh, <laughs> because, uh, so when I was 12 years old, uh, I recorded this means war. I also recorded, uh, I am available and don't let your heart be hardened, which were, you know, other songs that, that were on that album. But I, I got asked to come down to our local Christian, uh, television station and, uh, and do some songs because they oh, wanted on, to see, listen, listen. So, so here we go. So this is 12 year old me singing. This means war. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Now, I did not have the charisma on stage yet. Still straining to hear hit those notes, man. Yeah, you, you didn't quite do it, buddy. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite there, but. Oh, man, you got to hit that one note. We got that one. Oh yeah. This white suit that my grandma made me wear. <laughs> well, you didn't want to get too carried away. Come on. You're 12 years old. Yep. So there you go. So that's uh, Boy, that was it. Look at that attitude. Yeah, man. I, I that was uh that was good times though man i tell you what that was uh that was good times for me man that was just you know oh, that that is so cool i loved you guys so much and i cut my teeth learning about singing about about music and everything on those first few petra records and it seemed like a petra record was coming out every year oh it did yeah you guys were putting one out every year oh, man. The record company come on come on uh, bring it to more income come on come on uh but we got a tour, you know, you tour this record. It's doing real well. Oh, no, I know, but you got to work on this one. That's going, oh, okay, all right, whatever. And I yeah. never mind recording. I mean, it was always fun to go out to California and hang out with John and Dino and sure. and, and watch Bob create ridiculous classics. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, th this means war was, was uh, Bob. Yeah, I don't want to skip over that. Bob Hartman, his writing, man, is is just amazing. He's yeah. he's such a great songwriter and uh, yeah, just just phenomenal stuff there. You know, you know what's cool about his writing? It doesn't. It's not dated. No, no. It, even though the so even though the music seems to change, it's it is. It's timeless. It yeah. those lyrics, man, and they speak. They would speak right to you, like like it was right to you yeah. for you. And I'm the one who got to sing them all the time. Oh That's man, cool. how awesome! So I I do want to touch on one thing. So this record right here, On Fire. Yep. Such an underappreciated album, as far as I'm concerned. You know why? No. Okay, I'll tell you. Awesome. That that record. First of all, I am super excited about that record because after following This Means War, I didn't think we could. Mm. This Means War was so big uh, in the scheme of things at the time. Yeah. That I didn't think that we could do better. Well, the minute I heard the first three songs on Fired Up. I said, oh my gosh, this stops. And I knew for, but the problem was we had just changed labels. Mm -hmm. That was the last album on Star Song. And they were very, they weren't very happy about us leaving. Mm -hmm. And so they just put it out and let it, let it, no, no advertise, no nothing, just on its own. And it did good for no advertising, no push. Uh, they just put out the minimum amount of, of, uh, uh, effort on it because uh, uh, we were gone, and that's why that's why that got lost in the shuffle. And I Man. totally agree. That album and no doubt are two of the most under. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to that one. We're gonna get wow. to that one because I because I know that that's one of your favorites. Uh, but yeah, and plus plus this artwork. Oh my gosh, wasn't that cool? Oh my gosh, I look. I found that by accident because I was so into this min means war that mm -hmm. I came across that. Like I, I totally now see understand. Because I didn't see any promotion for it, nothing. I just was in the the Christian bookstore one day, and I saw this, and I was like, "Wait a second! There's a new Petra record. What what is this?" And I was like, "I told my grandma, I said I gotta have this. You gotta buy this for me." And yeah, the first time I heard all first fired up, songs. 
Oh, those my. first three songs just. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I, I love the fact that you are aware of that as the artist who made it because yes, absolutely. <laughs> it kicks, man. It kicks. I, you can't listen to all fired up without yep. just, just getting all fired up. I mean, it's just ironic. And then it kicks right into those drums and right into the next. And it's just, Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's minefield cool. that hit you where you live. Oh, oh man, I, man. I, know, I, I, and it's funny. You miss, I, Petra just did a show as we were recording three days ago for mm -hmm. the first time for the first time in four years. Yes. And the first song we did was fired up. Oh, and, oh. I, want you to know, and I want you to know as a singer, that's not easy. And I told Bob after I said, Bob, right at this moment, I sing with about four other bands. Mm -hmm. I sing just about every kind of song you could think of, right? There. And I want you to know that Fired Up is by, hard, by far the hardest song I have to sing at this moment. Mm. And, that, and they dropped it. They dropped a step. And I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that. Because yeah. for one reason is we're playing in D now, D tuning for guitar. Yeah. And you know what that is. Yeah. It's really gutsy. Mm, yeah. It makes rock even more. And it helped me because we everything's <laughs> always an E. So now it's sort of D. I'm going, oh, good. Uh, but even that tuning down, I'm going, the first song, I'm not warmed up because I don't do that kind of stuff. And I mean, it was a strain. Uh, it's hmm. So just between you, yes, I can sing pretty good. But that song, anybody can sing that song, especially the same key. I could do it once. I mean, I can do it, but not in a show. I, well, I that, could, and that scream from Minefield that you do? That, that's another story. That was the last thing I did on the record. We oh. saved it to the last because we were in a rush. Remember, we're still doing the the, the uh, 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 this means war tour. Yeah, and they are squeezing me in. We never stopped touring, so I would sing three or four shows in a row, then fly to L.A., sing my guts out for two or three days, and then go back and do three or more shows. There was never time. And at the end of the – and John John Alfonte, who's my, one of my best friends, is a terror as a sing, singing producer. He shredded my throat every time we sang. And by the time I was done with the record, I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. He says, oh, we got to get this screen. Gotta get, I says, I can't talk. I can't. No, you can. You can. And it, Tick me off because he said, that, "What's wrong with you? What do you mean you can't?" And I'm all, oh, ooh, 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 and I let out a screech that I don't know if I could ever do again, mm. and I don't know if I'd want to because man, my throat was killing me. So good, so good though, man. I mean, Thank that, you, buddy. all that stuff, man. Vocally, it's just, I mean, you you inspired us all to play good Christian music, man. But uh, but we just couldn't play yours, like. like <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny. I trying to cover that scream. Oh, afterwards, yeah. you know, it was like, oh man, Great okay. So it's I, fun. yeah, that, that that's awesome. So, but I, the next thing I want to say is like, because I don't think a lot of people understand this, and I've heard this story many times, but maybe you can maybe shed a little bit more light on this. So, obviously, worship music is all the rage nowadays. Yes, right. Everybody, what I find really interesting is back then you guys were doing songs that were very worshipful. You could sing them as worship songs if you wanted to, but they weren't considered worship songs, right? Yeah. They were just considered inter entertainment songs, you know, presentational they songs. Played, they weren't played in the church. Maybe, maybe like, oh shoot, what was back then? Uh, thankful Heart. No, Thankful Heart, Don't Let Your Heart Be Hard. Some of those were probably sang in the church, but not as praise and worship. Yeah. And here's what happened. Yeah, because you guys, because because I, I I tell people this, and and I got a lot of worship like worship music friends and stuff like that, and as a worship pastor myself, that like I tell them like you don't understand that you we all owe the fact that that we're doing contemporary Christian music as a worship you know part of our services to Petra, and they look at me like, what are you talking about? And and then but I tell them like. Petra was the first band to do that. You guys were literally the first group to put contemporary music. Well, remember, to worship. God, 
God deals de dealt with us very often. And what happened was we were we were really kicking. I mean, we were doing real well with This Means War and On Fire. And again, we were changing labels. And one of the reasons why we left Star Song is we, we came to him and said, listen, we want to do a praise and worship album, a, a rock praise and worship. And they looked at me, oh, you can't. Nobody would touch that with a 10. Oh, no, no way, no. And we said, okay, all right, that's fine. And then we went to Word Records and we said, okay, we want to do a praise and worship record. And they were smarter. They go, they were going, oh, <laughs> Okay, yeah. Here, here's the deal we're going to do. You sign for six records, and we'll, that praise and worship can be a signing bonus. What do you think? In other words, we don't believe in it. We think mm. it's stupid. If you want to waste this budget on that, more power to you. And so we said, okay, that, that works. So we went in and we did, we, we uh, called all, our, or actually at this time, I think we called and mailed all our friends, uh, pastors, uh, song pastors that we'd met and say, can you give us like two or three names of the, of your kids' favorite praise and worship songs, mm. you know, uh, the church songs. Uh, and so we got this whole list and we go, huh, okay. And we started picking different songs and say, okay, how, how can we make this sound cool? And the reason we did that was, after we were, after the churches really started supporting us, we appreciated it very much. I mean, we would have a concert and the whole parking lot would be packed full of church buses. Mm. And I remember Bob and I looking out the window of a, of a theater and seeing seriously a whole, whole, just packed full. And Bob goes, they trust us. Mm. We're, we, it's working. And so we said, you know, Church has given us a lot right now. They're trusting us. We, what can what we need to do something more for the church, the church in you know the yeah the, and the inner workings, and so we went to a a, a big conference, a, a youth pastor conference, uh, in California. Bob and I and our manager, and uh, we went there and we we had a big meeting with them. We says, listen, we are very thankful how the churches are trusting us. And what we want to know is how can we help? What can we do as a, as a uh, band to help you all? Cause you've got a major job. And they all said, well, you know, it's great that our kids go to your concert and they just yell and scream, sing all your songs. But then the next day in church, mm. we start playing music and they just sit there. And we're going, well, how good is your music? He <laughs> said, well, you know, it's a typical, you know, and we said, well, hmm. And so Bob and I, and Bob sits there, mm. hmm. Well, what if we could, what if we were able to play some music that they could sing to? Mm. In other words, what if we gave you a CD or uh, that type of tape that they could sing to with maybe, with maybe songbooks? And you could, and they could sing with that. You could play that music, and they could sing along. And they're going, "Oh, that's a great idea!" And Man. so, so we went in, and the whole idea about the Petra Praise record was it was good. the Petra Praise record itself was just a sample of what the what it could sound like. Sure. And the whole idea initially it came out as a as a uh, praise and worship package, it had like 20, yeah. 20 long books. If you remember that? I, do you ever yeah. see one? Yeah, I, I have seen one. In fact, you know what? And I wish I would have pulled it out. Uh, I didn't think about it, but uh, I actually have, we were talking about On Fire. I have, you guys also put yeah. out a, a video event for that. I have the old VHS thing with all the little booklets in it and everything for the On Fire video event that you guys put out for youth groups. Yeah. And that gave us, that's what, it was sort of on that same scale, but this time it was, uh, uh, you know, for Sunday school. Uh, yeah. Praise, and and what happened was the sample started hitting. I mean, the, the Rick, you know, the CD itself, they buy the product, but they no, no, we don't, we don't want the package. We just want the CD. We want to play the CD. Yeah. And so all of a sudden the record, goes, Oh my gosh, uh, we didn't print that many. Uh, uh, and so they changed everything and they started just pumping those out and they couldn't ever pump enough. And it became 
the second biggest selling record we've ever had. And and then we did one in Spanish. We did we uh, at yeah. the same time we did a Spanish version, and it exploded in Central and South America, and it changed the the uh, it actually opened up. Let's put it this way: you think that the churches were anti rock and roll here in South and Central America, it was even worse. Oh, but wow. when we did the Spanish praise and worship album, they were open enough. The pastors were open enough to go, this is really mm. current and it's, it's beautiful. And they understood the words and they said, we like this. And all of a sudden they, they opened, they opened up their all of Central South America to us. And the first tour we ever did there, I felt like we were the Beatles. Man, it was, it man, was the man. biggest. It was the most unusual tour I think I ever did. Wow, wow. Well, I know we 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 can't look. You guys have you and the band. You have such a discography that I mean, literally, we could like go on forever. But I do want to ask you a few couple rap, rapid fire things. Uh, so obviously, this album right here, Beyond Belief, mm -hmm. uh, phenomenal album. Probably notably, like if if people don't even really know who Petra is, a lot of people know this album yep. and they they know they know the songs on this album what what were some of the highlights of that what were some of the just the the things kind of going on at that time that like when you guys noticed wow this is this is really kicking because it's 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 heralded as like you guys is oh, big. Yeah. yeah well when we when it first came out we had two songs uh i think it was uh prayer and uh I, I don't even know if it was beyond belief yet, but but we had a rock song and a and a, 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 a mellow song, and mm -hmm. between those two, we ended up being number one on every chart that existed for Christian music, including Billboard, uh, including there there was at that time it was like five or six different charts, and we ended up being number one on every chart at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's never been done by anyone and can't be done by anyone now because. There aren't that many charts anymore. <laughs> so when we saw that, we said, oh, my gosh, this is probably going to be a pretty big deal. Because, like I said, uh, the, the first two songs were just two of, of oh, my I, We did, I think the, the record company did six singles and every one of them went number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just that's what it felt like as a fan listening to this to this album. Was yeah. it was it just felt like you kept getting hit with good song after good song after good song after I mean just great song not even just good song but it was like wow this is awesome and then you listen to the next song wow this is awesome you know and it just you just felt like you were inundated with just song after song yeah it was it was an exciting time and about that time we were we were touring with Josh McDowell yeah and that was that was an event in itself and it just all the you know it everything was working for us it was uh it was really. A very unique time. You know, remember I told you that as a, a secular star, or excuse me, secular singer, um, it, it it got boring. You mm -hmm. know, you do it every night, it gets boring, and it was never boring with with Petra. It was always something. To, it was always new because every night there were new people coming forward. Mm. It was just it was different, uh, and uh, and this video was a. Another, this was, it wasn't a music video. It was a movie. Yeah. And, and we are very proud of this. Yeah. It, it had a, it had a theme, it has story, but it also had six music videos in it. Mm -hmm. And so it served as we always, we tried to always try to maximize whatever amount of money we spent. How do we maximize to make it as useful as possible? It, it's, you know, basically uh, taking, what God grants, you, what God apply gives you, and using it to its potential, and that yeah. this was uh, pretty cool. This is all. It also should should be noted. Um, you know, this is what a lot of fans consider what they call the dream team. The <laughs> the the uh, the. There's been a lot of members of Petra, a lot of wonderful members of Petra, and I would never want to take away from anybody who has ever been part of Petra because I think everybody has brought something new to the table and, and, you know, creativity, but this is when a lot of people were into you guys. And, uh, and this is what a lot of people look back fondly on. And, uh, even just watching this video here, like with you, it just, uh, you know, it's just, a uh, it brings back memories for me. Uh, just a few years ago, you had the opportunity to get back together. Like everybody wanted you guys to get back, have wanted this pairing of Petra 
back mm-hmm. together. I, look, I knew John, and, and, and I'm going to show something in a minute, but I knew that we had accomplished something playing with you when people kept telling us, you guys resemble this band. <laughs> because we had we had a keyboard oh, player. You look like Bob Hartman. Yeah, I kind of got I got, I got the yeah. curly hair, man. Like, look, yeah. like I I I could I could pull it off, right? Like yeah. I got the Bob. What are you doing on this? It's been me this whole time, John. It has been you character. <laughs> you do that to me every time. I don't know what I did oh. there. Uh <laughs> but yeah, it's it's me this whole time, John. Um, but no, I um yeah, I just um it was funny because we, we had a keyboard player. We, you know, we, we had these big vocals and, and, uh, and, and when people said that, like, I remember we looked at each other and we're like, what, you know, but, but it was funny because like people have wanted you guys, this, this group, uh, you, Ronnie Cates, John Lowry, Bob Hartman, obviously Louis Weaver, uh, to, to get back together. And you guys had the opportunity to do that just a few years ago and get back on the, back on a stage. How was that? How was that doing that again? It was fun. I, I, I really enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I was. Uh, and then we did, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, I'm on the Rock. I think. Yes. Yes. A very, you, short, you... a very short version of it. And um, I'll be honest, I'm on the Rock's okay, but there were so many other songs I'd have rather done uh, that would have highlighted Petra a lot better. But, you know, uh, it was an easy, easy shoe in form at the program, and, and everybody was happy with it. But it was fun. It was fun playing with everybody. Well, I got to tell you something, John. Um, I, you know, don't don't shortchange. I am on the rock because because <laughs> I am on the rock. I'll never forget, dude. So playing with you, uh, uh, playing with you. I, I told you off air. Like it was, it was such an uh, an amazing thing to me. And and I and I think I told you this. I well, I told you this before, but I don't know if you remember this. But when uh, when this album came out, uh, no doubt. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, that was about the time that, um, man, I've been playing guitar for a couple of years and, I, you know, I wasn't really that good, but I remember sitting, you know, trying to learn some of the songs and stuff, you know, heart of a hero and all these different songs. And I was playing my guitar in my bedroom. My grandma comes into my room and she was coming for some other reason. She says, you know, she stopped and you, you know, you were talking earlier about like, you know, a prophet, you know, pro- people giving you prophetic things. Uh-huh. My grandma stops. And I, of course I got the record, you know, I got the album playing and, you know, I'm making a bunch of noise and she stops. She goes, Enosh, who is that singing? And I said, that's John Schlitt. That's Petra. And she goes, God's telling me you're going to play with him one day. And I look, I'm, I'm like 16, you know, 17 years old. And I'm just like, thanks, grandma. <laughs> yeah, sure. Grandma's being sweet. Grandma's being nice. Grandma's, you know, uh, grandma's doing her thing, you know, and I appreciate that for sure. But, you know, hey, like I, I can't even figure out this. I can't I don't even have a concept of what Bob's doing on this song. To even play guitar, let alone play with John Schlitt, you know. And John, the first show that we did with you, my grandma was on the front row. Oh, that's so cool. Did and she, she, yeah, she loved it. Oh my gosh. She, she loved it. I mean, my grandma's still alive. Uh, she pastors, she's, she's a phenomenal woman of God. And I learned then when my grandma tells me something after that, I, I especially learned mm-hmm. anything my grandma's ever told me ever since I've taken note of it Praise God. because if, if God could tell her at that point that I was going to play with you one day <laughs> and that happened. That, then I that, that I knew that anything was uh, was possible, and and uh, you know that that being said, now I, I wanted to share with you. I wanted I wanted to give you a little bit of a because I know that you haven't seen this because I, I know that that you're probably not scouring the internet for for videos of me. <laughs> um, but uh, but I I kind of wanted to take you down a little bit of a, a, a memory lane uh, because you've you've had great solo records. I mean, Shake was your was your first solo record as uh as a christian artist Mm -hmm. how important was that to you oh very uh it was uh it was certain i won't say a dream come true but you know as a frontman for petra first of all they had so many writers in petra i i never even tried i there was why waste my time uh when you've got amazing people like Bob and Johnny and all, you know, the only one that did write besides me was Louie, you know? So, so Mm. there was no reason for me to try to get in the way. And so, but I had, you know, as I went, I would take Petra tracks and go out on my own when Petra wasn't touring and play for smaller places that couldn't afford Petra or, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I started 
a lot of different ideas were coming across to it in my mind. And I, I had some things I would like to say in my own way and some music I'd like to play in my own way. And so when the record, I went to the record company, I said, I would like to do a solo record. And I would, I've got, I've got music. I know what I want to do. And they said, okay. That's great. <laughs> and so it was a major challenge. I mean, it was the first time it's the first solo record I ever did. Hmm. And remember, I, I've been with ridiculous musicians my whole life. Yeah. So I was always able just to pin, well, this wasn't any different. This record had some of the best musicians that you could ever have on it, but it wasn't part of the Petra camp. Yeah. It was, it was a new connection for me. And, um, but I was very much responsible for all the decisions and all this kind of stuff, which I never had to do before. It was always, uh, you know, somebody else or, or we together and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So from, from, did I like this balance of mix? Uh, I actually did change a couple of things in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, the last thing I could, you know, it actually caused a little problem because I wanted something a little different, but um, uh, it was uh and I love this record. I, I think yeah. my solo record right now, I have five solo records plus a Christmas record. Yes. And Christmas record is is a dream come true for me. But every one of these five have a, a very important purpose. Shake, The Greater Cause, and Go are in a package of, as far as I'm concerned, a trio of some of the best rock stuff. Oh, my gosh. Oh my I, gosh. And it really show pieced, not me necessarily, but the band around me. It's just, it is to me what I would like to hear in Christian rock. Now, now the grafting was, that was my third record. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one after uh, a, a separation of about 10 years between records of uh, solo records. And it was a family record. It was me yeah. sharing my heart about my family. And it was very important. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, the fans weren't, they, they liked it, but they weren't that excited about it because it wasn't that rocking thing. Sure. It was an album I had to do. And then Unfripped for Swine, which my second record. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about because, because I, I don't want to leave, I don't want to leave out that album at all because let me tell you something, man. I love Shake when uh -huh. it came out. I thought it was awesome. Uh -huh. uh, but when this record came out right here, First of all, John, what uh, talking about what's, what's, that, what's, what's going? Thing? What what were you thinking with 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 that? Like you got all this hair. They they did you up in all these kind of weird ways. You did a video where you're like uh, yeah. in a spacey kind of yeah. You're you you kind of yeah. like it was almost like that Frank Gorshin thing from Star Trek, like where you're like half black, half white. Like you're all this stuff's going on. It's a weird title, unfit for swine. I know people reacted. You, I know because uh, you shared it a lot of times when when we when we played with you about you know you had a song called "God Is Too Big," and everybody <laughs> thought it was "God Is Stupid," and so you were getting flack for that. First single, and I thought it was going to do so well, and uh, I have then I have radio uh, programmers call me said, "John, we got a problem. Uh, people think you're singing God Is Stupid.' I, I you need to." <laughs> Who would think any Christian artist would think God is stupid? Uh, well, they were going in a different direction, you know. They was, oh, well, like, yeah, it was uh, counter programming. Yeah, counter programming. It was, it was not my my best. Uh, yeah. But the album, John, the I, album is so good. Thank you. I think it has some of my best writing. Yeah. And, and it's a shame. And but what happened was. I tried, and you know, the first record, uh, Shake was like, it sounds, it sounds like he's, it, it's Schlitt doing Petra, and I'm going, no, it was. I mean, I was part of Petra, part of my development, you know, part of Petra's development was me. Yeah. So yes, excuse me. You're good. Excuse me. No, <laughs> uh, I don't want any. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, so the second record, I said, you know what? I don't want to sing just to Petra. In fact, I don't want to sing to Petra uh, audience. I want to try to reach people that don't like Petra, but I. But if they knew the, the kind of material, you know, if they knew mm -hmm. the subject we were doing, maybe it would help draw them into the package that Petra has after, you know, three million records of all these amazing yeah. songs. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I tried to be as far away from Petra as possible from the look yeah. to, to the style of music, to the way we recorded it. And all I did was shoot myself in the foot because <laughs> uh, Petra fans didn't like it. And, and non-Petra fans knew I was part of Petra, so they weren't going to listen to it. Well, and this Petra fan. That's because you got loved. class. You mm. got class. I just needed about 500,000 of you, and I'd have been fine. You know. Well, I, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, look, playing uh, – when we got to play, like, I killed a man with you. Is still, I mean, it's fantastic. When we got to play uh, uh, Save Me, we only got to play Save Me with you one time. And here's the funny thing about that. We worked on Save Me so much. And we kept saying, hey, we want to do Save Me. We want to do Save Me. We want to do. And finally, in Albert Lee, Minnesota, you said, okay, we're going to do Save Me. And Matt, who is my friend who plays bass, he, like, we were so psyched because Matt could do that high harmony. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And we literally, it was the first song we did. We started off, we're like, we're finally getting a chance. And he knocked something out with his bass and so for the whole first like part of like just be up to the guitar solo he didn't even play <laughs> i know and it was so empty it was blowing me oh, away man. but he so, came right in at the right time because i'm like sitting there playing going oh lord what am i going to do i got to go into this guitar solo there's nothing under me but keyboard like what's gonna and then he just kicks in and it was like oh i got my part though Mm, yeah. yeah. At, least, at least, yeah. At least that last half started sounding like the song. But oh yeah, yeah man. But yeah, it's a it's a great album, and I and I would tell anybody, look, I love this album, The Greater yes. Cause. The Greater Cause is that is just rip your face off. That right there to me is is you. Like I can tell that that is your passionate, yeah. your your passion thing. I got to see you when you were like <laughs> right after you you did this album. And uh, I can just tell that this album meant a lot to you. This is this is the album, folks, that uh, the song that I mentioned to you uh, that he wrote for his wife, uh, Dorla, called The Gift that uh, no, Tiffany no. walked out okay. to. It's This album had developed so well that I said, you know what? I want I've always wanted to do a song for my wife. And I knew I'd probably only do one because it, it had to be perfect. And I think this record, it should have it on it. This record yeah. deserved it. And it fit perfect. And yeah, yeah. I... I have to say it's one of my, it's it's one of my favorites. And the sure. guitar tone on this album right here, yes, is a when we were recording. My so I play in a band called Waking Vegas, and uh, when we sat down and we started talking about like what kind of tone do we want, I said this, just this all day long. <laughs> I said you don't have to listen to anything else. If you if you learn one thing about me, this whole recording, this this is the tone that I want. This is what we got to strive for in the studio because it, it's phenomenal. But I will tell everyone out there, do not overlook this album. Don't look overlook any of John's or Petra's albums, but get this album. Get the Unfit for Swine. It's got it's got Dan Huff playing guitar on it, for goodness sake, which is like trying George, to figure out some of his stuff was like it's got it's got some of <clears throat> I'll tell you what, the thing with Dan was uh this was about the time that that Grunge was coming out and all this. And he underplayed, actually. Mm. He underplayed. I'm going, what are you doing? He said, well, you know, you, you, it's called subtlety. I'm going, I don't want subtlety. I want you stripping that guitar. Yeah. He goes, no. I'm going, fine. And I was like, oh, I hate grunge. Oh, yeah. I hate grunge. But he still sounded amazing. Well, uh, I got I to gotta, uh, show you something because uh, – uh, playing with you, like I said, was so much fun, man. And it was such a great time for us. There was, there were so many great songs that we wanted to do with you. Uh, obviously playing, um, beyond belief was, uh, man to actually play beyond belief with you. Having listened to that song so much in my life, had it ministered to me so much in my life and then to get to play, it, uh, with you, uh, this is, this is us together. Uh, you and me, uh, Man, you got a lot of videos. I, I do, it. man. I got, I got, I got, I got more stuff that I haven't even that I never even uploaded. This was one of the first things, John. I when I when YouTube first started about ten or so years ago, like I had this video and people kept asking me to see this stuff, and so I did. And so, um, so check this out.
Dude. <laughs> that was my short hair time there, buddy. I'm telling you what, man, that right there was <laughs> it for me. Like I could have died and just gone straight to heaven and been at the pearly gates and said, thank you, Lord. Thanks. You did a good job there too. And that, that was young me, man. That was like, yeah, it was like, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> there were not, not everybody could play that lead. I'll I tell you what we put, you know, that, that's the funny thing is we put a lot into that and we never got to play with you. We literally rehearsed with you that day uh -huh. for the first time. And I'll never forget. Cause you came in and I don't know what you were used to like getting, but like, I, I and I never told you this story, but Sue Dempster, our friend, that's how I got to know you was through the Petra zone, the old message board and stuff like that. Um, the week that she called me and asked me if I'd be interested in doing this, I literally had this conversation with the drummer in my band. I had played in a band called Antioch for about 10 years and yeah. we were kicking our butts. We were trying to get somewhere. We never could get anywhere. We'd have people say they were going to look at us, didn't look at us. Well, it was just all over the place. And we had traveled all over the place and I felt like we didn't put enough in. Like felt like it wasn't a team effort that we weren't putting enough in that, you know, God was not going to honor it if we were not out there just, you know, just doing our best. And so on a Tuesday afternoon, John, I told my friend Andy, I said, you know what, man, we, we've been spinning our, our, our tires here for, for 10 years. We're not going to get anywhere. I said, you know, what, what do we do? We started, you know, 10 years ago as four guys who just wanted to take, you know, Jesus to people. And I'm like, and, and that's fine. And that's what we're all about. I'm like, but it's like, where are we going? What are we doing? I feel like God is, is not going to honor it until we get serious and we do something. It was all about we, it was all about what we were going to do and what, how we were going to make it happen. And I was like, but you know, but God's going to honor that, you know, God's going to do his part, of course, you know, but, but we're going to, we're going to, you know, but we're going to get this, we're going to, you know, we got to promote it. We got to do this and that. And I said, you know, man, I said, when we started 10 years ago, we were just waiting you know, like somebody would see us somewhere. And then they would say, Hey, you know, that Auntie Antioch band. Yeah, we like them. And they'd call us up out of nowhere. And I told him that call is never coming, man. <laughs> that was Tuesday. That uh -huh. was Tuesday, Saturday okay. afternoon. I'm sitting in my house and this, and the phone rings and I pick it up and it's Sue Dempster. And she says, Hey, Ina, she got a second. And I said, yeah, she goes, Hey, you know, John's got some solo shows, uh, you know, around the Midwest and everything this summer. Um, but he, he doesn't have a band to play with him. He's going out with tracks. Like you mentioned earlier, and she goes, would you be interested in maybe putting a band together to play with them? And I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> I get you. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. That, All that's, right. that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And then, then when I, yeah. when I picked my tongue back up, uh, it was like, wow, you know, man. Yeah. Like, am I stupid? Yeah, I, I could do it. But I tell you what, it was, it was an undertaking because we had to, we had to get together. We didn't know. I mean, we, the internet was not what it is today where we had, you know, we could, conference in and do all these cool things and stuff, you know? So it was like, you would send me a list of songs and say, well, we might be doing these songs. I love that. You were like, we, we may do these songs, but we may not. And I was just like, okay, so we'd learn all these songs and, uh, and like, man, we just put so much time into it. And so I loved it. Cause you came that, that afternoon and you started us off with you guys' song, lovely Lord. You said, Hey, let's start with something nice and quiet and easy. And I don't know if like you were just trying to feel us out. You're just trying to be like, Hey, who are these guys? Like, I, I, and I remember you said you even brought your tracks just in case. Cause like, you know, cause yeah. these guys weren't, you know, we don't, I, you didn't know us. And, and, uh, and I'll never forget because we did that. And you're like, okay, what do you guys want to do next? And we're like, you want to do wake the dead? And you're like, you guys know that? And we're like, well, yeah, we know that. Like, how can you do a John Schlitz show without doing Wake the Dead? And so I'm, I'll never forget, we played that. And I remember you kept, every song we did after that, you would turn around and you'd look at us. And it was just, it was such a dream moment, man, for, for a young kid like that to have John Schlitt turn around and just look at us after every song and just go, man, where did you guys come from? Who are you guys? Like, you know, and it was just, it, it was fantastic. But, and this is the only other thing I wanted to show you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, one or two. So there's a couple other videos. Matt took a bunch of video, uh, that whole time. We all shot a ton of video when we were playing with you and just got all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but, uh, Matt put, put together a compilation video of all the shows that we did with you. And, uh, and so just the things that you were talking about, uh, uh, 
uh, I Am On The Rock, which was a song we bugged you to do several yes, times. Did. And we only did once and we made it memorable. And uh, and that was uh, <laughs> and that was when we played down in uh, uh, Peoria. And uh, let me see. I just got I got to pull it up here. Uh, which one is this? Gotta make sure. Yeah, this is the right one. Uh, so we we did this and I'll never forget what you said after after we finished because we put our own ending to it because I had seen Petra do it so many times and I wanted to put oh, it's peak in Illinois. I'm sorry. And so I wanted to put our own spin on it. That song just kicks, man. <laughs> This the whole song's not here. He's got it cut up here in just a second. By the way, the guys who mixed this, this was the best tone I think I've ever had in my life. Live. This was wow. Listen to these vocals. I can't believe this is us. No, you guys were good singers. Good players. That's why I said, man, uh, where did you guys come from? I, you know, in the middle. Of, when I took my tracks with me, it was out of self-preservation. I, you got to understand, I, was, I had done this maybe once or twice before. Oh, yeah. And the first time I did it, it was absolutely the worst disaster I'd ever done before. Hmm. So I was very leery about it. That's too who's my assistant, you know, you hear the name Sue, he's my assistant, and and I was saying, you know, tracks, I, I really would like to have a band, but I just don't have it. Yeah. Just, no, I, I totally get it, man. But this song just has such a cool uh, vibe to it. And when you hit this note here, But we threw you this uh, this curveball and did this whole ending. And I love what you say when we get done, because it sounds good, man. And it's funny, because this is an old VHS that actually has a little bit of warble to it even, but it still sounds good. We worked on this so much, man, this ending. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's so funny because you just come down off the stage. You're just like, I don't even know what to do anymore. And look at Matt. Matt runs off the stage to the left. We we're so crazy, man. We were just so happy to be playing with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he runs off the stage. He went around the stage. <laughs> It was a never-ending ending. Yes, yes. yes he, comes, he comes back in on the other side of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I think by that time I was sitting down having a having a coke. Yeah, yeah. You were already back at the hotel. I, you were like I think hanging it was, up. Yeah, taking a shower. I love what you say here. Does the word showboat come to mind? <laughs> Does the word showboat come to mind? I love it. I, <laughs> like, like how, how how do you how do you up up upstage John Schlitt at his own show, man? I, I, like, I don't know. It's just so funny. Just so funny. It was it, those were uh, those were so good. But another, uh, and this is the last thing I'll show of this. But um, another thing was the the first week we played with you, John. Uh, this album, it hadn't, the album hadn't come out, but you guys accidentally released the title track of this album right here, Jekyll and Hyde, which we, yeah, we accidentally, okay, that doesn't surprise me. Any. Yeah. Oh, oh, so, so I don't know if you, if you know that story. So, you know, the internet was, was kind of fresh and young. That was 2003. And uh, what happened was, was M pop put the song up for people to be able to listen to so they could just go and hit a player and listen to the song. Cause look, the Jekyll and Hyde album was a, was that rocker album that people had been asking you guys yes. 
for for a long time. And and I know that you guys struggle a little bit here quickly. Like, what was the struggle that you guys had? Because you guys were doing rock. You guys, I mean, you guys had had this arena rock sound. The '90s come. Obviously, you talked about grunge. Mm-hmm. you know, things change. And then all of a sudden, you know, you got, you know, these alternative bands and, you know, these pop bands and everybody else. And there's Petra and you guys are trying to do your thing. And every album seemed to have some of that rock flair to it still. What was it like trying to gauge those waters through the nineties and the early two thousands like that? Oh, uh, it was tough. It was really tough. And Bob, Bob left the, you know, at, uh, after him, after he played no doubt, uh, in the studio, he left the, uh, um, the road. And so I had to deal with uh, all these new guys and, and I was in charge and, and we, it, it was tough. Uh, it was, and trying to figure out, and then you get all these new young faces in it and they think they know better than your stuff. So they would, they would play it the way they think it should be. And uh, it, it was, um, I had a bunch of great guys. I mean, I had great bands, uh, uh, not quite as much discipline as I would have liked, but uh, but um, uh, it was a struggle. It was a struggle because we didn't we didn't want to lose the message, and we knew we were a rock band, so we didn't want to be we didn't want to go into pop. You know, we didn't want to be a rock band goes into pop music. Uh, so uh, we always tried to keep that flavor, that rock flavor, but try to use the new sounds, and uh, and we got older, and people and the industry. Uh, we're a bunch of young characters that uh, didn't think we were cool anymore. So now, no, no matter what we did, uh, it wasn't going to be sa- satisfying to him. We really, we we did. I think we tried to to do our best to fit in the scheme of things and not be not be rebels. But it got to a point where uh, it just just we got tired of trying to trying to satisfy people that would never be satisfied. So we pretty much. Uh, what happened was just before Jekyll and Hyde, we signed up with Impop, and they did a, and they did a, a record um, uh, called uh, uh, it was another Praise and Worship album. We said no, don't no, not not now. We just had Petra Praise to it. You, we need to do a rock record. No, no, we know better. You know we're we we know we're we're, we're happening. and we're cool. You just sit back and let us do what we do, and you just follow. You know, watch us, listen to what we have to say. So they did the 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 praise and worship album called uh, oh, revival Utah. revival revival right yep. and and that was a it was a good record but it wasn't the record that was needed it just it wasn't what was needed and so and M Pop wasn't going to put too much money into it uh, they just sort of said we love Petra we we respect them we want them out there but we don't know if they're going to make any money so we're not taking too much chance on them right. and when revival came out and it just bombed like a dog, uh, mm. uh, they, they came to us as, you know, they got a lot of complaints about what were you doing? Petra's a rock band, let them be a rock band. And so, um, they came to us and <laughs> said to Bob, especially Bob, do what you do, write what you write, play the way you play and we'll put it out. Mm. We don't want to get in the way. It, it went from, you guys have no idea what you're doing. We we're in, we're in charge, and we know we're, we're cool. You're not. To we have no idea mm. what you do. Please do it. And so wow. he did. And Jekyll and Hyde was absolutely. It was one of the rockinest albums we ever did. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, we were really happy with it. We went out and we just we worked that record. And when I say we're, we played anywhere they opened the doors to have us play. We didn't care about the money. We wanted to reintroduce Petra. Yeah. The band, the band that we're rock, And we had a different lineup, which was very unusual. It was just a three piece with me. And it was a rock. I mean, Bob was, I think it's probably some of the finest stuff Bob's ever done. Oh my, oh my gosh. You know, Bob Dude. Hartman is a guitar player. I mean, we talk about oh. his song songwriting, but I would love to talk to Bob one day. Uh, oh. like in that, in that way, because, because Bob was so inspiring as a guitar player. And I think a lot of times he gets uh, like, because it was Petra and you guys were really an ensemble, you know I mean? Like you guys were all together and really part of that. But I mean, people overlooked the fact that in the, in the nineties, I mean, late eighties, early nineties, you guys were always voted 
favorite singer, favorite bass player, favorite guitar player, favorite drummer. I mean, you know, and all the, you know, the CCM magazines and all that stuff every year, you guys were voted top band everything you guys were on top of everything and yeah. bob was just a, phen a phenomenal songwriter phenomenal guitar player and this work here is is just so different but yeah they they put the song out jekyll and hyde because they wanted people to hear it because because look the, the internet was a huge part of this era of your oh, guys's yeah. longevity i yeah. remember i was part of a, a message board called the petra zone and man we were taught we were on there were people on that board man john just non-stop you know so some people were okay and some people were a little weird, but you know what? It takes everybody. And I, and I tell you what, man, we, but man, we would talk Petra. I worked third shift at the time. And so there'd just be these times, man, where we just, we just get in these message board conversations. You guys were like, Bob would listen to that all the time. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for some of the people oh, that are so and opinionated. Bob, and yeah, and Bob would come in, you know, I, I listened and they were saying they didn't like this. And I said, Bob, I don't care. <laughs> They don't have any idea what you're talking about. Just, just yeah. stop it, you know. Yeah. I go, geez, don't let them get to you, bud. Uh, just do your thing. But I tell you, what, it really uh, helped you guys with this though, because Impop put the put the song Jekyll and Hyde up mm -hmm. on their website, and mm -hmm. it was meant to just be a thing where you could just click play and listen. Uh, somebody apparently uploaded it wrong, and they made it where you could right click on it and just download it for free. You could just save it to your computer, of course. and. That's probably not good for you guys, but look, I remember where I was, John, when I first heard that song and I'm thinking, cause we had, I had heard revival and I liked revival and there's some, there's a couple rocker songs on there. I mean, the noise we make, we did that song with you and that was a great praise tune, whatever it was, it was rocking, but you know, all of us fans, we wanted to hear you rock. I mean, that's why, that's why I love this album. That's why I love this album. That's why I love stuff off of this album and, and, and your new album, uh, especially, I mean, go, you're a rock singer, you know, and you guys are a rock band. And it was like, we kept hearing about this elusive rock album again, one day that, you know, this real hard rock album, <laughs> the elusive, the elusive, and, the elusive album that all of us fans seem to be chasing, you know, like one day we'll get this hard rock yeah, album. Cause we know you guys have it in you. <laughs> and we and we as fans, we were we were savvy enough that we knew that the record company wasn't allowing you to have that opportunity to really give the so nobody held it against you guys. We were just like somebody let Petra do what Petra does, like you said. And we got to see the artwork, and it was like, and and the name, and we were like, that's different because everything you know, because a lot of your stuff had always been very uh spiritual in nature or something like that, or you know, just whatever, and like Jekyll and Hyde, like. That's kind of a different title for a Petra record or a Petra song or something. And the first time I heard that song, man, I had headphones on. I, I, I'm so glad that I heard it the way that I did because I had headphones on. I'm sitting there at my computer. And I'm like, what did I just listen to? <laughs> sonically, this is, I mean, sonically, it was the coolest thing that I had ever heard. Mm -hmm. And just, I mean, just, it was just rip your face off rock and roll. And then when the album came out, man... It was like the whole album was like that. It was just one right after another. I, you know, well, like, were you guys, were you guys, did you guys feel relieved finally? I think I, well, Bob did that. Bob and I did most of it, but Bob was one in charge of all the sounds, all that. That was a Bob record. Nice. And I just went in and got in and I sang it. And uh, that uh, now, um, oh, shoot. Um, um, drummer for, for Peter Fuller. Peter. Peter, good buddy of ours, and um, he produced it, mm -hmm. but Bob produced it. Nice. And Peter came in and honed it the way he thought was going to be cool, and he didn't. He didn't do too much. Except the only thing Peter did was chop off all the leads, which you, which just ticked me off. I could. I would love. To, I would love. I don't know if you guys have that. Like uh, we don't. no, it went oh, on the man. floor. Got, got swept away. Oh. I, my my biggest complaint was where are all the leads, Bob? You chopped off half the. Well, they're not. They're just not. Um, uh, that's not in now. I'm going. I don't care. You you only <sighs> a few people that can do what you do, and you're throwing it away. I, mm. Well, I'm just you know that's what they, they think. Think to, I'm going to tell. Okay, and yeah. but but it was uh, Peter did a great job. He did all the drumming, and he was he was uh, excellent. Yeah. We had it. We had Who would have known that he had that kind of like? I mean, everybody knew he was a good drummer. I mean, don't get me wrong, but like he, for that type was, of music, he was in his element. Trust me. Oh man, that was good he, stuff. It was like one of those guys. Oh, finally, yeah. 
and and he's he's a rocker. Pete Pete's a rocker, even though they're they're in yeah. this thing now. Uh, he's he's a rocker at heart. He's he yeah. he knows how. I got to see I got to see him last year and talk with him a little bit about about all that and stuff. And so that that was cool. Now, I wanted to show you this because what the story I just told you, that all happened on a Monday. Okay. And and our first concert with you was that coming Saturday night. And so we heard that song and I know that God made it available to us that way to be able to download (laughs) just for us so that we could download it. Everybody in the band could get a copy and go. And, and, you know, John Holtz, God bless John Holtz, my, uh, our keyboard player, because John, he didn't have much to do in that song. He basically had that bell, that bong, <laughs> but man, yeah. he played the heck out of that bong, man, out of that bell. But we learned that song and I'll never forget because just as we were getting ready to leave for the night, you look, you turned around and you said, well, is there anything else? And we said, well, do you want to do Jekyll and Hyde? And you looked at us with a shock, looked like, how do you guys know Jekyll and Hyde? <laughs> <laughs> you guys hadn't not, even played. I think, even yet. Yeah, I know you, you. The album wasn't out. You guys, I think, had only played it at the. And I only know this because I'm a Petra, you know, nerd. Uh, see, I'm a nerd of many traits. Uh, but I know you guys had only played the song, I think, once, and it was outside of the U.S. You guys had played it um, someplace else. So you well, guys, was it, was it Brazil? I think so. It was like Brazil, or was it Sweden? It's probably oh, either one. Either one. Yeah. Is- yeah. yeah. So you got, I knew that you guys had only played it once. And so mm-hmm. this ladies and gentlemen is my claim to fame. Not only did I get to play with this man, but I was part of the band that got to play Jekyll and Hyde first in the United States live. Don't tell Bob this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So, so this is us, uh, uh, going into, uh, in, let me make sure I got the right, uh, Right there, yeah. Okay, part four here. So this is this is us going into Jekyll and Hyde, and man, this this was just uh, so killer. What a great riff! We're so crazy, man. I tell you what, you guys were you guys were the bounce in this band I think I ever played with. It was fantastic. One of those, well, one of those things I, I could just stand by the microphone because you guys did enough mu- enough move, moving for me. You know what, man? I, like it was just one of those things. Like I've always believed that when you go see a band, you want to see that band perform. You want to see them give their best. You want to see them put put everything out there. And like we actually talked about it because you know because. Trust me, we're like that out there on stage, and we were totally about that. But like, we actually put some thought into this. We're like, so we're not John's band. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, are we just gonna like? How are we gonna do this? You know, because it was kind of weird because we had been in bands and we were all part of our own thing and performing and stuff. Like, like we gotta move. Like, you know, like we 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 gotta we we got we gotta do our thing. You know, we gotta do our normal thing. And we're just like, well, I guess if if John doesn't want us to do it, he'll just tell us. And and you know, I love our thing. I love so. it. It was it made it a lot easier for me. I like I said, I didn't move around quite so much, and uh, I loved I love see people hear with their eyes. Mm-hmm. People hear with their eyes, and if you guys are having fun and you're bouncing around like that, uh, I, it, you walk away going, "That was cool." Even yeah. if, even if they couldn't hear the music, they they saw the music. That's yep. cool. Now the only thing, and we joked about this before, so this is the last thing. Uh, the only thing I, I want to give you a hard time about. Okay, go for it. Because uh, your song, Let It Show, we only did it once. We played it at Godstock. It uh-huh. was something that we were looking forward to playing. We, we got this whole thing, and I and I learned that guitar solo. I put a lot of time into that guitar solo, and I was like, it's not even a hard guitar solo, but it's just like the the, the point was like, that was my time to shine, John. I'm and uh, and uh, we got into this into this moment, and um, and you can see here, we start, uh, we start playing uh, uh, Let It Show, and uh, I love... Uh, there's our good friend Sue Dempster and uh, introducing you there. John Slit. 
from my hometown. John Schwinn. This little Brown. combination. <laughs> I gotta say, man, it was a good band. Yes, it was. 2003. Dude, th this is that moment that I was telling you earlier that I looked across the stage and just seeing my buddies there, all the people that were there, that stage, everything, and then see you there. Man, this, this just made my life, man. And this is such a great song. You're right, it is a fun song. I forgot about what I <laughs> Not everybody could do that song, though. I love this, man. This is classic John Schlitt as far as I'm concerned, man. This is, this is you and your element. Just So this is me doing my little thing. I'm getting ready to lead into this guitar solo. Here it is right here. Big Ben. Oh. I guess we're not doing that part of the song. No, I did. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was always such a funny thing, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time, though. Speaking of, this is a little quick, a little part of Save Me, Baseless. <laughs> Actually, I think he put in the part with he's playing bass. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's playing with the bass. It's part of the end of the song. Yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. But I'll tell you what, they uh they ribbed me forever though about that. They're they're like they're like Fury Nash is man, he's just leading up in that guitar solo. You hear the bend too, it's just like Meow! and then like Oh, I'm, so, sorry. No, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've wanted to tell you that story forever, man. I've wanted, I've wanted to tell you that forever because it's just a funny thing, man. It's just hilarious. I'm uh, laughing at your misery. I'm sorry, buddy. No, man. I, t I tell you what. I was, I was forever blessed. I was forever oh, blessed to just be a part of that group and, uh, and to play with you. And, and I'll, and I'll be honest with you, John, it, it gave me a lot of confidence because I never set out to be a lead guitar player, to be quite honest with you. I, I, I was a singer and I had, I had sang my whole life and I just wanted to learn how to play guitar and write some songs. And that was it. And, uh, through a process of just going through stuff with bands and different things, like I, I kind of turned, you know, I kind of had to, uh, but it was really this moment of playing with you that, finally kicked that into gear in fact uh you don't know this but when we first found out that we were going to do this matt is i mean matt is probably one of the best guitar players that i know i mean hands down i mean professional whatever even though he's my friend he's a phenomenal guitar player and when i first heard that we were doing this i was like oh well i'm not playing guitar like i'll be i'll go i'll play bass you know like i, I can learn the bass stuff you know i'm like but matt's not gonna but the thing was was matt had been playing with me for four years and he had been playing bass because we needed a bass player and he decided to come over and play bass with us and he just never left and so that was probably process and so i just figured you know matt's gonna take all these intricate guitar parts and bob hartman parts and stuff and i was like i'm not gonna be able to do all that stuff and you know what 
Matt came to me, John, and he said, no, Enosh, God gave you this. This came to you to bring it to us. God wants you to do this. Huh. And it gave me such a confidence after that, man. And honestly, after, after doing that and after playing with you and all this stuff, like, yeah, it was, uh, it was a confidence that God instilled in me after that. Like you're talking about that confidence earlier, right? Like when you joined Petra, that it was like, your confidence, like, Hey, no, you know, it's, it's not a cockiness, you know, it can, some people could definitely err on the side of cockiness, but, yeah. but yeah, that, that moment where you just, you know, you know, look, I'm called for this. I know God has this for me. I'm going to go out there and do what God's called me to do. It's a knowing. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're still doing it, man. You're still going strong. You got this new album, uh, go, uh, that, that you're looking cool now, man, in this, in this race car now. And, and, and you know, you're, you're doubling up, you're on the couch over there and in the race car. And, uh, I mean, and so you're excited about this album. You're, you're still going, man. I I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm blessed, man, that you're, that you're, still kicking that you're still rocking it out i i i only hope to be like i tell people i'm gonna do this until i can't do it anymore yeah. i i'm called to do this I've, I've known in my life that i'm only um you know only a few things but i know that i'm called to do what i what i do and i know that about you john from wow. your legacy from your from your life that that you have lived is it you man you're called by god man you've inspired so many people and, and me included. And so I'm, I'm just thankful for that. And so I would tell anybody at home, if you know who Petra is, look, go, go back out, buy some more Petra albums, go, go back out. Like, like look up, look up stuff that maybe you haven't heard in a while. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, especially if, if you haven't heard John's solo stuff, you look, you got, you got to pick up this stuff. I mean, pick up the greater cause. It's fantastic. It's, it's just an awesome album. Uh, and then his new album go, what I love about go is it sounds like a natural progression from the greater cause. Yeah. I'm, I'm really thrilled about it. I, I was concerned. Uh, it was like, uh, remember I told you about this means war. I wasn't sure if we could follow it. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to follow, uh, the greater cause and go just came in. Uh, It was a lot of work, but it just came natural. Uh, Every song just came natural. I had a vision. I, I had a direction. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, I, I brought in a lot of amazing people and uh, we all worked as a team and uh, it tended, it ended up with 11 songs that served their purposes perfectly. Uh, yeah. just, uh, and they came in, like I said, in very unusual ways. Uh, for instance, uh, Fighting the Fight was a very unusual way. I, uh, it was a, a friend of mine from a ministry who wrote a song and said, I need your help. And we work, worked on it together and it ended up being a, uh, uh, one of the, well, I really a, a, a classy song. Um, mm-hmm. So it just, you know, it's that kind of stuff. And and just uh, I co-wrote with a whole, I co-wrote every song this time, and that was unusual for me. And I love every bit of it. I love this song here that we've got right now. The, yeah, this is off your uh, off of uh, the uh, of this album right here, the Greater Cause. Uh, but uh, yeah, faith, I mean, faith and freedom. Yeah, that. That says it all. Um, you know, without faith, our freedom will be lost. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I'll tell you what, you're doing, you're, you're, you're not showing any signs of stopping. You're, you're going off your more bands now. I mean, you're in Petra forever, but I mean, you, you're, you, we, we didn't even talk about, like, I've already kept you much longer than I ever thought I was going to keep you, but <laughs> I, I hope I, you had fun with me. I hope this, you had fun with me at least. Buddy, this is a marathon. I'm telling you. I am I, so sorry. I'm so sorry okay. I kept you this long. I, I hope that the, the folks, uh, if you don't edit it down to half, uh, that the books won't be bored after a while. <laughs> no, this is, but th- I'll tell you what, this is stuff though, that I talk to people all the time. And like, this is stuff like people, people like this stuff. They, they like to hear about, about you and about what, what was going on during these different times. And, and I mean, you're, you're playing with uh, Billy Smiley, uh, for, from Whiteheart, which I, I, funny enough, you we were joking about looking like Bob earlier. I have a picture from me at 17 when I saw you guys with Whiteheart during the uh, the salt box tour. And I have a picture with Billy Smiley and I swear we look like brothers. I had the long, I had long curly hair. He had long curly hair. And it was like, like people always look then they, they would always ask me, is, is that your, do you have a brother? And I'm like, no, it's like, is that a cousin? And I'm like, nope, nope. That's Billy Smiley. And, yeah. uh, and so, uh, yeah, man. So you're, you're playing with those guys and, uh, and that's been a cool, cool thing that, that, that you're doing. And I don't know if you, if you want to say anything about that, but, uh, 
Oh yeah, that the Union of Sinners Saints. Uh, uh, that was uh, another sort. Not I won't say an experiment, just another new possibility. But Billy called me one day, and we had met at a conference, and he says we need to get together and write. And I'm going, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then going, he'll never, you know, that'll never happen. But he called me. He says, John, I got a studio here. Let's get together. I said, okay, that sounds good. And we, I mean, we wrote, we were writing songs like nuts. Uh, uh, our first song was, I think, came that day, you know, and it was a pretty cool song. And uh, uh, so we ended up having like 10, you know, 10 songs that we didn't know what to do with. You know, it's like, well, yeah. maybe, maybe we should do a record. What do you think? I said, <laughs> no, not, you know, and so uh, we started. Billy is a big favor guy. I mean, he knows everybody. And so he started calling favors. We had Michael W. playing. We had uh, Phil Kagi. We had, oh, my goodness. Oh, you, na you name it, we had him. Uh, it was a who's who of ridiculous talent that came in and and, uh, and played with us, and uh, it was a good good record. We're actually about half done with the next one. If if we do a next one, uh, we, we of course you're always looking for financing now because because we're not part of any label, uh, uh, and we never will be. Uh, we we won't be part of a Christian label again, and that's okay. Uh, I don't really think we need one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think so, you're doing fine. The only thing we need is financing. So we're, we're working on that now. Well, and that awesome. if we get it, uh, there might be another one of those come out now. And I can't leave here, guy, until we start, until we say something about the Jay Secular band. Oh, Which, hey, you know, you don't know how many times, John, I have gotten a message from somebody when you guys have gone live and somebody, because they, because everybody knows I'm the John Schlitt guy, right? And so, like, people are like, hey, did you see you know john schlitt is on the jay seculo like people who didn't know what it is they're like why is john schlitt on with jay seculo and i'm like <laughs> and he sings with him yeah of course yeah absolutely man it was that that band is fun so i'm really i really am blessed i've got you know i uh, i've got a repertoire now of songs that mm. i'll never be able to sing all of them and uh my biggest my uh, my biggest problem is how I need to find out from a promoter, for instance, what records in your area would you like to hear? Do you want to hear my solo stuff? Do you want to hear Petra stuff? Do you want to hear any stuff? Do you want to hear some of the stuff that's JSEC or, or Union? I, I seriously have to say, okay, give me a list of the songs you'd like to hear. And it's to that because I there's no way I can pick, do just a set anymore. And that's for a singer. That's pretty cool. That is cool. God's man. good, man. I'm telling you, God's good. And and I hope that, like you said, I'm, I'm going to do it as long as he allows me. Well, I tell you what, man, as long as you do it, John, I'll be listening. And, and uh, you know, who knows? Like, I I, I almost tried to get you at my church uh, this last year. If, if this whole thing lets up where, where we get you, I'd love to have you in and, and and maybe even sneak on guitar there with you and play a couple songs. And, well, and we, need to, we need to do a band so. again, buddy. Get Absolutely. Band. You know, I always wondered, like, like it was like it was it was the summer of love. <laughs> and, then it, and then it was gone. And then I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest, no offense against the guys who played with you after, but I was like, yeah, they're not that good. Yeah, they're, they're not as good. Yeah. I like, did you hear I them play it. Wake the Dead? That doesn't that even sound disgusting. like Wake the Dead. That what just... is that? And that that that's the, the GMA week band? Come on. I don't, no, no. I don't even know who it was. <laughs> Well, at least I got that, right? At least you still remember who I was and you still took my call. So I appreciate Absolutely, that. Absolutely, buddy. I Absolutely. appreciate that, man. But no, you th thank you, John, for, for joining us, man. Thank you for joining me. And uh, you know what? I feel like that this was like catching up with an old friend. Like, Because I don't even think we – I mean, we talked, but I don't think we even just talked one-on-one -on -one like this even that yeah. much back then because we were always busy doing something. And uh, uh, But, man, you're just awesome. You're like I said, you're you've been so inspiring to me. I'm so glad that you're that you're still going strong, that you're still doing this. And and guys, again, visit johnwschlitt.com. Uh, I'm sure they can find all your stuff there. And uh, you got a YouTube channel uh, where the people can find all your videos and and stuff. Like like seriously, go, go buy some of these uh, some of these albums, man. Because they actually actually right now uh, I've got something called Schlitt, Schlitt Shop. Okay, and go to that. Go to johnwschlitt.com and then go to Schlitt Shop which is my merch area, you know, uh, and, and right now that album is, is featured and you can listen to every song, the whole song for free. And, and if you like it, uh, you know, dive into it. If not, you've listened to it for free. It doesn't cost you anything. I didn't want anyone to, 
to uh, buy a record and say, oh, I didn't, this is not what I thought it's going to be. I, whoever buys that record, I want them to go, this is exactly what I wanted. So so if you want to listen to 11 songs for free, go there. Go, go do it. That's awesome, man. Well, well, thank you, John. Thank you. You're, you're, you're a blessing. You're, you're an inspiration. You've definitely ins inspired me. And I, and I'll say this, like anybody who who's around me for any, my drummer in my band right now, every once in a while, and, and I guess I do this a lot, but look, you know, like playing with you, it, it changed my perspective on things. I played in little bands my whole life. And then all of a sudden, like I was exposed to a lot of the things that I hadn't seen before in parts of the business and different things, even just our small little things like that I hadn't seen before. And uh, every once in a while, something will come up and I'm like, yeah, you know, when we were playing with John Schlitt and now every once in a while, now my, uh, my, my drummer, Aaron will just look at us and go, Oh, you played with John Schlitt. I don't, I don't think I ever heard about that before. That's, that's pretty amazing. I would have thought that you'd want to talk about that. Cause I don't think you've ever mentioned before that you've played with John Schlitt before. I mean, the, I, I would talk about that all the time if I were you, Enosh. So, yeah. So, so I, uh, to me, it's, it's definitely something. Well, buddy, it's a pleasure. And uh, uh, if you ever feel, I don't think we could do another interview because I think you've talked, we've talked everything I can think of of my life. So, so if we did, we're going to have to figure out something else to talk about. There you talk go. About, talk about you. There you go, man. I, I love you, man. I, I really do, man. I love you as a brother in Christ. And I just, I just love you for, for who you are. You're, you're a real genuine guy. And uh, I'm thankful for that. So guys go, go, uh, go like, like John said, go, go listen to his stuff, go buy his stuff, go, go rediscover or discover for the first time this classic voice. Cause he is truly, he's the voice of, of what Christian music was. I know when, when I was growing up and long after that and, and an inspiration to me, and I know a lot of you guys listen to me and you go, where, where does that come from? This guy right here. It's a huge part of that. I'm the reason you can blame me. Thanks. Blame, so blame him. So, Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to end up like splitting this up into a couple of, of, of different things, but, uh, either way, Thanks everybody for, for listening and watching. Thank you for your support of the channel. I uh, definitely appreciate it. Uh, all of us here at the Poindexter lounge and um, Hey, like I say at, at the end of, uh, of every video, don't let anybody uh, put you down for what you're a fan of. You know, we're all fans of different things. And I know as, as music changed, people didn't understand sometimes why I was honestly, you know, John, people didn't understand why I was a fan of Petra. They were like, Oh, we like this band or that band or whatever. And I was just like, Hey, Petra is the real deal. And like, I didn't take that, junk back then and i still don't take it today with everything else that i love and so the thing is don't let you let anybody tell you that the thing that you like is 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 out of date or it's or it's something whatever you keep liking what you like you keep standing up for that you keep speaking the truth and uh and stand up for what you believe until next time guys my name is enosh aka enosh fett along with the legendary voice of christian rock john schlitt saying we'll see you next time stay nerdy